Let me let me let me change something real quick because I forgot to turn this. Oh, oh, excuse me. On. There we go. Hey, you guys. Uh, this is Drunk Monkey Forty Two. Normally, I am playing some sort of other games, but today, I am actually Ryan Cato, the Dungeon Master for our group, the Door Smashers. Um, this is our first live stream that we're doing as a D and D group. Um, I kind of talked with the group here. We're all excited. And they're all willing to try it and, and go for it here. Um, did you upload your uh, icon, by the way? I forgot if you did or not. So, uh, if you're watching for the first time, thank you for watching. Uh, I usually start off with that. Don't forget to hit that follow button. Now, we usually play Saturdays, um, just about every Saturday, around 2.30, for about four hours or so. Uh, we will be taking a break um, after... Uh, I think we're going to take a break in like two hours. We're going to do a two-hour sesh and then take a break, uh, probably about 10, 15-minute break, and then uh, and then we'll continue on with our uh, with our game. So I'm actually going to... forgot to put a timer on here, so I'm actually getting the timer ready. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> Yeah, my, my timer's picky here, so whatever. All right, that works. So I'll give you guys a quick little road, uh, rundown on our uh, group here. We've been playing for, what would you say, uh, almost two years? Three years? I know I know us three have been playing for about three years. I think everybody else in this group except for uh, Zach over here has been with the group for probably about two years. And then Zach's our newest player. You've been here with us for what six months? It feels like for uh, just a, year? a year. Has it been almost yeah, a year now for you? Wow, yeah, it has been going by fast. <laughs> so we'll get to the game here in just a second. So give you guys a quick rundown. We are playing the module of the Mad Mage. Um, it, it is a dungeon crawler. In case anybody hasn't played it, it is a dungeon crawl uh game. But we do go out of the dungeon, and we do end up in places like uh, Waterdeep, uh, where the players do have a home uh, that they call the Door Smashers Inn. Uh, that's in with two ends. No. <laughs> even though they don't, even though they don't house anybody but themselves. Uh, but we do occasionally visit Waterdeep, where they purchase stuff and visit, and we do have stuff that we go outside uh, and and uh, visit other areas as well. Uh, so we started off playing the, uh, dragon, dragon heist. I believe it's called the dragon heist. Wasn't it called the dragon heist? Uh, to where they started at level one and we played on there, uh, played it through it. Um, uh, we, they, the, the players themselves have been through a lot of, a lot of stuff, including, uh, a Pandora's type box, uh, that one player had attuned to. And had carried and had been subjected to um, some witchcraft of hags and whatnot. Uh, they have completed that one. It, it was a long go, long journey. Uh, we have also done where uh, the players had thwarted a uh, one of the hags uh, of trying to take the box. They afforded that one. That was the last one, I believe. The very last ha hag that they... Uh, captured and secured now from there like i said they completed the dragon heist they kind of went they saw the dragon they completed that and then they were quested to go to uh the undermount for a few your a few quests one they were trying to find a, a throne right that you guys were asked to find they did find that they completed that uh you were uh also asked to find a brother of a uh water davian and you guys found that, well, you found what was left of them, which was a finger. Uh, but you were also quested by the same people you got the finger for. You were requested to find a dagger. Now, I, I'm skipping around a little bit. I was wanting to make a video of this and kind of just post on there and let it play. So that way, you know, it was playing before we went live. But I I had a long week this week at work. So, uh so basically, where they're at, they they went to the sixth floor of this dungeon, and uh, they found the dagger. 
and they went back up to the uh, fourth, third. They went back up to the third floor, I believe. Yes, the third floor. You guys went back up to the third floor and talked to the king and queen uh, hog goblins that were up there. And the queen is the one that asked you to find the dagger because her husband is blind, and the dagger gives him true sight. Nobody else knew that he was blind, and it was a very big disadvantage. Now, you guys have just returned it. You guys had just returned the dagger, and uh, we're given actually a big banquet celebration. Uh, and this is we're coming into our last uh, session that we did. So you guys were given a big banquet session uh, to where food and all kinds of other stuff was given, ale and, and such. You guys party now. So there was like uh, giant spider, roasted giant spiders and stuff like that that was in there. You know, stuff that you could pretty much find in the Underdark. Um, you guys were given that. The next morning, uh, you decided that you were going to go ahead and head back up out of, out of town. Or head not out of town. You guys were going to head yeah, back yeah. up. Yeah, you're going to out of town, meaning out of the dungeon, right? <laughs> so you guys are heading back up to Waterdeep is where it was. You took the water canal because they have a freaking flying magic carpet, guys. So they <clears throat> they got up there. Yeah, that's the DM. That was me giving it to them, uh, which they won during a, a uh, competition in the Coliseum. It was a group competition, which was great. Uh, so... So you guys get, took the carpet, flew back up through the waterway, uh, where you proceeded to go to the Waterdeep Inn. From there, you landed. Uh, we will go over players and, and introduction here in just a second. Uh, we had one player uh, that plays two characters. One of his characters uh, does not stay at the inn with the rest. He actually went back to his place. Uh, that is where we see him walking down the street. Uh, no, well, yeah, I think you walk. You walked at this time. Walk away. You walked away. The camera kind of sees him panning, walking away from the street. Uh, and then the camera then fades over to the rest of the group and sees what they're doing at the same time that he was doing as they walk in uh, to the end. And that's where we're gonna uh, show the. Uh, we're gonna click over to the map. So. Uh, now, this isn't exactly the inn that you guys stay at. Uh, this is a temporary photo right now um, until we can get the actual inn on here. Um, but this is where you guys are at. Um, now, I'm not going to place your icons right now on on in the inn as, as right now. Uh, you don't have to worry. But it pans over to you guys as you walk in to your... Uh, your home, basically, uh, here in Waterdeep. Now, as as the camera follows you guys inside, you're war welcomed um, with a warm greeting. Now, you're going to have to refresh me because it's been a while since you guys actually have been inside your tavern. Now, you have a hired bartender uh, that is there. Um, you did have two. But to come find out that one of them was a semi uh who ended up turning into goo after they were killed, and you guys kind of bottled uh, that person up and have them actually uh, above a mantle saying, here lies Psy. But, uh, <laughs> but other than that, you guys are welcome. Now, it's not Volo. It's, it's Bloom. Floon, Floon, yes, Floon. So you are welcomed by Floon. He is the guy that you guys saved um, earlier in the campaign of uh, Dragon Heist. Uh, he felt embedded to you guys as far as uh, saving his life. Now, he, he greets you warmly as he's serving customers. Now, I, I wish I could add some sound effects and stuff, but we'll, we'll get to that. It's just right now we're just... Trouble. This is our first episode, so we're kind of just, you know, uh, working everything out, and we'll add stuff here and there, like little little bar sounds or something like that in, into this. Uh, making sure that's still good. Now, you are welcome here as he greets you guys. He's like, uh, he, he's like, hey, 
welcome back. Uh, it's been a while, and it has. I think it's been. Oh man, you guys have been in that dungeon for days. Days. Yeah, it's been days. Oh, if yes. yeah, about a ten yeah. day, right? About a week. A ten ten day in uh in D and D is about a week. Ten days, one week. Uh, not normal for us, which is seven days here. But yeah, you guys have been down there for for at least about ten days. Hadn't seen you for a while. Uh, you guys come back in. He greets you warmly, like, hello, hey, guys. As he has his hands. Well, he he does have a few. He has a few uh, glasses in his hands as he's carrying over. Now, two mugs are floating across as your invisible type servant that's permanently there named Leaf is delivering uh, uh, food as well as drinks or whatnot to some of the... Uh, patrons in here in your bar now as you guys walk in you get a moment you know you you guys kind of like hey and and some of you began to kind of strip a little bit you know start unbuckling some of your armor uh as a customer a patron in your bartender slams his mug down <coughs> oh uh gets up after kind of almost choking on his on his ale gets up and hastily walks over to you guys. Dean, you, Thorin. Now, this is this is where we're going to do a little bit of introduction because this is new and nobody knows who you guys are. So we're going to start with, since I did say you, we're going to start with Thorin. Thorin, uh, if you wouldn't mind, describe your character and in, in, in a brief of who he is, if you would. That's been and was raised in, on the battlefield, and it's a paladin with the patron or the the god Lord Helen being his. What's the word? You, you can be a little bit louder, it's fine. Okay. You, you two are probably going to have to be the loudest out of most people since you are further away. But go ahead, continue. Well, he, uh, he left his... Uh, he left the army because he was trying to seek adventure. And he found a fellow dwarves from... Uh, the rival clan. Well, it would be a rival. I wouldn't War really call it a rival. It was a competitive clan. Right. And I mean, all dwarfs in in nature kind of kind of compete with each other. Yeah. Uh, we met up in. Well, where did we meet up at? It well, was you in, guys met actually in water. World. Waterdeep in the Onion Floor. Yeah. Most of you guys, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you uh, you actually did take a break. Uh, just to kind of throw in a little bit of recap on there as well. You did take a break actually from adventuring, uh, where you found yourself in the uh arms of the uh. Yeah, kind of like a town guard. Uh, the helm. Uh, you joined uh, the, the helm. I got it in my other book, and I don't have my other book here. Uh, but you did join up with helm, uh, the the right hand of helm. I think it was, was called or something like that. Ba basically, they are the uh, kind of like the water water deep uh, the the water deep guards, uh, the police, if you would. Now, there are different branches. You do have the royal guards and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, that uh, exactly. So uh, so he sees you, but he also sees, and we'll go ahead and we'll do, um, you know, we'll do, we'll do, uh, we'll start with on this side of the table. And, and we'll do uh, Bernice, if you would, please. 
and you can you can also be pretty loud too as well because again you're a little bit further away from the mic. Uh, well, my character is a dwarf as well. Uh, she is shorter than most dwarves. What we decided. Um, <clears throat> but she has a twin brother, uh, Bartholomew, and we decided as well. Short, long story short, I my character decided to worship an elven god because she was uh, kind of enthralled by the um, speech that was given by the, it was like a traveling gypsy band of elves, and she was enthralled, and so and she was kicked out of her clan, and her brother uh, would not let her go by herself, so he decided to follow her. And we ended up in Waterdeep, and uh, now we're on a quest, and um, I serve the elven god Omgarad, who is a giver of life. Uh, my character is a life cleric, and <laughs> um, she is uh, kind of like the mom of the group. I was kind of the leader for a while, too, after certain circumstances, but I'll let Bartholomew uh, describe those circumstances. Okay. Well, um, did you just, I, sorry, I was also reading something. Did you describe what Bernice looks? Uh, she's, her looks? Sh uh, she's shorter than normal. She's got brown hair, green eyes. Um, she does not have a beard because she's a dwarf. Uh, but she's got, does she have mutton chops? Like, like kind of just long sideburns? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and she wears, uh, not, well, let's see. She wears heavy armor, I think. It, yeah, a chain mail. Okay. I always have a disadvantage on my stealth. Now, which I never wear stealth. What type of weapons would she, would, is she carrying? Now, I, I forgot to ask this about Thorn, so we may go back to Thorn in, in a minute. Uh, but what, what, what is she like, like, Weapon wise, what what does she have on her side? Maybe I, on her back. I am carrying a morning star, a magic morning star, and a quarter staff, and um, I also have a brand new shiny shield, which I made out of um, what was that metal? Mithril. Mithril, yeah. yeah. That um, was inspired by a uh, uh, an image you actually had. Yes. Your 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 deity, your goddess, inspired you to make that, and that was incredible. Yeah. Okay. Well. Uh, We'll kick it over to your twin brother, Bartholomew, or what we call Bart. We also call him BF because there's so many Bs in this game. Uh, so if you hear me refer to him as BF, that is Bart. Uh, B, uh, if I say B, that is usually Bernice. Uh, but BF, Bart, uh, go ahead and fill in the gaps and also describe your character, would you? Bartholomew Feldspar is a cool dwarf, uh, the twin brother of Bernice. Uh, again, short for a dwarf, just under a three foot tall. Uh, typical dwarf, brown hair, long beard, but blue eyes. Um, and uh, again, Bernice said that we were asked politely to leave our clan when she decided to be a heretic and worship a elven goddess. Uh, so I ventured out with her. Uh, we came to Waterdeep. Um, and had some adventures, and eventually went down into the dungeon of the Mad Mage, where Bartholomew was killed by a zombie beholder, and was his soul was actually uh, trapped in his ring of mind shielding that he had, so his soul still existed and was out of the game for a bit. Until he was resurrected by a dragonborn cleric. And when he returned, he actually returned uh, as a paladin of Valkuna, his goddess. Um, so he is a paladin, but he is also a warlock, as inside his ring he met a spirit, Victor, who he has uh, also attributed his skills too so bard is a paladin warlock with very conflicted thoughts <laughs> all right and 
I forget. Did you uh, describe what uh, Bart looked like? Okay, I just again, I do apologize. I am paying attention. I'm just also reading reading something real quick. Um, now we're gonna flip over uh, to this side of the table. Um, a a uh, it's it's kind of weird because we have three dwarfs in the, in this party, and this isn't a dwarf. In fact, uh, this instead we're gonna flip over to Mal. Um, if if you wouldn't mind, uh, you're standing there as well, and you see this guy. I mean, he sees all you guys, but he sees you. Now, if you, if you wouldn't mind, would you uh, describe what Mal looks like and who she a little and kind of give a, a little bit of what uh, who she is. Mal is a human rogue in the pool. She likes to hide a lot. She has red hair. She has antlers. She has like green eyes. And she wears brightly colored clothes, but can hide all the time and have like the can hide, turn around for a second, and she'll be gone. She also has this thing where she collects skulls. It's like her weird thing. And I got, she has a fireball wand that she borrowed from Bart. <laughs> and borrowed. Borrowed. Borrowed from Bart. And Bertram has tried to take it at least three times. Um, she has three pets. A dog, a cat, and a horse. She got a new shield from Bernice. New old shield. A new old shield. Oh, new to me old. An old friend Bernice. Got a shield. She turns into many different animals. And she likes to turn into it her dog and just teleport with her dog. Just around the room. Cool. Wow. Standing not too far from Mal is an interesting fellow. In fact, he's new to the group. Uh, where you guys met him was actually in uh, the uh, Undermount. Uh, more precise, the uh, fourth level of the dungeon. Uh, if you wouldn't mind. Um, now, his name is Prequid, but I call him Peter. So, if you wouldn't mind, uh, Prequid, would you uh, share a little bit and describe your character? I'm Prequid. Uh, I'm a blue dragonborn wizard and uh i uh i met up with the group first time i met everybody i was tied up <laughs> literal some would say he's quite a mind <laughs> and being beaten for someone else's crimes essentially <sighs> and they rescued me i've stayed with them ever since been fun, love it. Uh, I have a sensitive uh, sensitivity to light. <laughs> you certainly do. In fact, I mean, it was pretty. It, I see her. What did I? Last time we, when we left, did I say what time of day it was? I think I did. I early think it was. Morning. It was earlier in the morning, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, when you guys flew out, you for sure were like, oh. The whole entire time, you know, when when you first get out of a dark room into the bright sun, oh, man, oh, geez, that stays with you the whole entire time. Yeah. Like, you could not right now. Mm. <coughs> now, did you describe your character, what your character looked like? And I, I don't have any hair or anything like that. I have just two white horns going up the back of my head, and I wear a hood a lot of the time. Now, did you describe you were a blue dragonborn? Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh excuse me. Sorry. Uh, I just had to make sure because, uh, you know, uh, wanted to make sure you describe yourself because I forget if you do or not. And I'm also reading something here coming up. Uh, so we're going to go back to Thorn. Now, Thorn. Did you, I forget, did you describe what your character looked like? Like, what type of gear does he have on currently and anything like that? I, I don't think you did. I think, I, I think you kind of gave a little bit of a backstory for your character. But what he sees is your character, like, describe the, the look. I, you're the 
other dwarf of this group. A paladin dwarf. A paladin dwarf, yes. The other paladin dwarf yeah. in this group. The first paladin yeah. dwarf in this group. But just real quick, he, as he's coming up to you, what, what is, I mean, he recognizes you. I mean, he, he honestly does recognize you. But this guy looks like he's dressed in street clothes and everything else as he's coming up. Now, he kind of made a little bit of noise because when he got up, uh, his chair scooted out, but it fell back. So it made that little flap, and he put his mug down. <coughs> and he's doing this number kind of walk, and he's walking over. Now, he is a dwarf as well, but he's coming over to you, and he sees you. Now, you're you're clad in, like, what he heavy? You're clad in full plate mail. Aren't you? Plate mail with a, a great axe on my back, shield, and a short, short sword, sword on your side, right? Good short sword on my side, yep. Yeah. And uh, long red hair, full beard. Yeah. Uh, wearing still flap full stilts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think those like raise you up only about an inch. They give you a little they bit of an inch. Well, no, I mean, with collapse, while they're collapse, a foot, so yeah. you're an extra foot huh? taller. Yeah. Okay, so you're you're the tall dwarf in the yeah. group. Uh, yeah, I forgot you do have those collapsible stilts, which is hilarious. Um, so as he's coming up to you and he's approaching you, um, and we'll we'll get to your other character when the when the camera pans back over and uh, and everything like that, but. Uh, it takes you a minute to recognize this guy uh, because he's dressed in street clothes. Uh, but you do recognize him. He is uh, Joroth uh, Brighthelm. And you know he's also from he's from the Lord's Alliance group, which I don't think, I don't believe you're a part of. I think, again, there's, there's another sector that is like the Helm. Uh, but I don't have the book on me just yet, but I can... I can actually look this up um, in a different way. So I may just have to do that. Um, do, 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 do. Just so we can give a little bit more detail. Uh, do Lord's Alliance. Oh, Order of the Gauntlet, I believe, is what you joined. Yes, because they worship Helm, uh, Tome, and Tyr. Yeah. Uh, that is who you joined after leaving the group for just a brief moment uh, for a little bit. You joined them, uh, but then I got assigned, I believe assigned to do something from your from your captain. But he is from the Lord's Alliance. But you do recognize him because he is a well-known uh, person for you to recognize. Uh, but he comes up to you. <clears throat> oh, Thorn. This great. You you and your uh, companions that are the ones I've uh, been looking for. Uh, word has gotten out that you uh, that you found the remains of Crescendo Rosnir. Now it, it may it may dawn on, it, it may come a shock. It's been a while. Uh, yeah. he, he's the guy that you were sent down there to find, but you guys only found the finger of. I think you kind of were briefly there, but the rest of the group, kind of hearing this, definitely uh, well, we've found definitely catches. Small, small remains, yes. Well, that's that's besides the point. Now, uh, the thing is, I have actually come to uh, request your aid. Oh, yeah? Yes. Uh, what's the problem? Well, we're looking for a... And he kind of looks around, and he's like, No. We, could, is, there any, is there anywhere where we can uh, maybe go a little, a little bit more private? Uh, it's, this isn't really something I want to uh, say amongst uh, the rest of the uh, patrons here. Go into back or my room. Yeah, but there's stuff down there that 
to other people or hide so like not much okay well i'm gonna go upstairs to my room because i am tired and just want to go to bed good night okay <laughs> you're tired it's early in the morning you got a hangover yes for a dwarf you got a hangover yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well what trapped. what they call ale right yeah <laughs> green ale <laughs> All right, so you guys, uh, you, you want to lead them over to a different part of the tavern? Yeah, just so where it's quieter and more isolated away. There was a uh, back okay. area, right? Well, you you could probably move to the back of the tavern in a corner. Um, there's one person that's kind of sitting alone at a, at a fairly decent-sized table that will pretty much all of you guys can sit at. You might be able to persuade him or something to to move but uh for the most part he, he's just kind of just sitting there drinking sure. so is that where you guys want to go yeah i'll offer him um uh, a free drink if he moves okay um uh, <clears throat> well it's uh when you guys approach the table you see he's kind of a barley man you know thick short beard uh short wavy type hair uh he seems to already be about three ales deep, as it is. Um, you kind of get the 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 feel from this guy just looking at him that he's probably like a um, I want to say construction worker, but that's pretty much what I'm going to go with. Like a, somebody who works for the city or something, you know, building stuff. And it looks like he he stopped here to have a have a brief morning oh, yeah. break, afternoon break, something like that and, and everything. But uh you come up to him and you, you offer him. Uh he kinda kinda gives you a a glare and at first like, you know, he's not sure. But you do offer him the ale. And as soon as it shows up, uh he takes it. Oh uh, all right. Uh all yours. Uh, thank, thanks for the ale. And, uh, I'll be right over here if you want to ever give me any more. <laughs> and he, he, he walks off. He ends up taking the, uh, taking another table off to the side. But, uh, you guys kind of gather around the table. Now, there is some music playing. You guys do have a bard who kind of, uh, visits and, and plays for you guys as well. And he's not near you, but he's, he's playing lightly. Uh, but you all sit around. Now, Bernice went upstairs. Who else is all sitting at the table? Besides Thorin, apparently. Also at the table. For Quinn? I pull up the chair that has so the table. You don't, you don't sit at the table. You, you walk off. Okay. Bart is going to start unstrapping his breastplate and start heading to the stairs and go over to Thorin and say, Hey, your highness. Is all good over there? Take a good party. Get out there and turn drunk. <laughs> uh, all right. So, as he sitting, he sits here. He uh. Well, apparently your party doesn't uh want to partake in this, but it's fine. Um. Word has traveled. In fact, it was also in the news newspapers that you, this group, which I'm, I'm excited that you're here, apparently found this person. Now, now the thing is, is uh, I'm looking for the Falconer's fist. Falconer's fist, huh? They are a band of four dwarf. Uh, adventurers. They went to the Undermountain over a year ago. Thing is, I believe Falknir, Falknir, uh, Gravel Fist stolen the Eye of the Spider from the Mir Baron Embassy in Waterdeep weeks prior. Now, things have been a 
things uh think things have been kind of strange uh harsh since it's been stolen between Waterdeep and the embassy. Embassy's always been pretty harsh on us. Uh, yes. Um So what what I'm asking and what we really need is uh just to go find that uh, both, uh... I, 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 if, if you could either find them really honestly we, we just need the eye back if we get the eye back we can strengthen our bonds with them and the alliance between the between Waterdeep and the embassy will grow now you will be compensated for this obviously you uh, your your group is fairly well known for with the Lords Alliance already for doing some things around here in the city. You will strengthen your renew re renown with us, but we can also offer you a reward uh, within means. Okay. Um, we would, we have to gather supplies and stuff like that first before we take upon this quest, but. Meet tomorrow here, um, a little after midday, and we'll tell you what, when we're, or who's all going, and how we'll... The thing is, I, I can do that, yes, um, it's, I've been, I've been coming here for a while now. Since I found out where your group was. And I've been coming here just about every day. Just to see if I can catch you. In your, in your group. Um, and, and try to. Ask for your assistance. It's supposed to have more of a dwarven action. But I keep coming in and out of it. So just picture me doing a dwarven oh, accent. Yeah, yeah. I, I keep coming in and out of the accent that I'm trying to do. And it keeps wanting to go the, the other direction. Spider right away. The what? The gauntlet, the spider eye. They just like said three things. No, no. Uh, the group is called the gauntlet. Yeah, the group. The group is called uh, the. Uh, it spelling is F A L K I R. That's the name of the person and fist. So I, I named it uh, Faulkner's fist, which that's how I'm pronouncing it. Uh. But yeah, so he's look. He wants you basically what he uh, just to sum it up. He wants you to find the group and retrieve the spider eye that they have stolen. Now he slides you a parchment. It's a little. It's slightly rolled up. This is what it looks like. I don't care. I don't care about what happens to the group. Priority is that stone. Well, I mean, they, they attacked the end. They stole from the embassy, so I don't know if our companions, our companions are willing to persuade them. So it's going to be uh, probably going to be by force. If force is what's needed, force is what shall be. Do what you need, but get that gem if you would. We'll get to that as soon as we can. I okay. may not be able to come back tomorrow. I do have duties elsewhere. All right. Um, you can find me later. Just keep keep a lookout on this. If you find it, please inform me. Your Captain will know how to get a hold of me for sure. Okay. I have to report back to him. Hey. Um, now, three mugs had already floated over to your table as you were sitting there from Leaf. He does take one of the, uh, the mugs before he goes and he downs it. Man, I can never get enough of this. It's how special. Ah, whoo! Really puts a fire in your belly, doesn't it? Uh, he stands up and he goes, "Now, 
Excuse me. I got to. I got a few other places I must be before my uh before I must report to it. And he proceeds to walk off. Now, Bernice, you went upstairs. Yes. What exactly are you doing upstairs? Um, took off um, all of my armor. I take a bath because I can. And now I'm laying in my bed and contemplating uh, how, because I do have this feeling that we're going to be going on another quest. I'm <laughs> contemplating how I might talk myself out of it, but I'm not going to be able to because can't help it. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Well, no, that's that's completely completely acceptable. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, so in in your guys's inn, it is. You guys have full working water, and uh, plumbing. As far as lights go, not really. I mean, you guys are more or less candles or something light, lights up, but you don't really have to worry about that because for some reason they just kind of flicker on. As you guys are walking, any doors left open that shouldn't be open just seem to automatically shut. Like you got a personal butler that just walks around and does all kinds of shit real fast for you guys. He's invisible, of course, and you can't run into him, but he's there. Let's leave. That's, that's your guys' nice little uh, person. Now, you're, you're doing this. Uh, you're sitting at the table. Mal, you're looking for your dog. Yeah. Now, where do you go first to look for your dog? To the kitchen. To the kitchen. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, uh, there has been some fresh bacon that had been cooked. Bloon uh, sees you and he goes, he goes, uh, <clears throat> Miss, uh, help yourself to to whatever you need. It's obviously this is your your place. I just I just run it. Uh, help yourself. And uh, as he does that. You see him kind of take a small uh, piece of something, and he kind of goes. He just kind of walks over. He's behind the counter with you guys, with you or whatnot. But he goes over and he kind of goes like this. And uh, next thing you know, coming out of the shadow is a, uh, a fairly plump-looking cat that's all black. And you just hear a little meow as it comes out and and, and begins to uh, eat whatever it was that he just gave it, and just kind of brushes up. And it's Fairly loud as you get closer, you hear the purr of the cat. Uh, he's he's your cat's kind of warmed up to him, and uh, and after after he kind of feeds it, hops up onto the to the bar and just kind of like sits there and then kind of like you know lays there with the cat and just seems to be just looking at just looking around, just lounge around, flops over uh, occasionally. You know when people are coming in or, or going. Uh, if they like cats or whatnot, they kind of little get a little scrunches on on the head. Cats are fairly friendly, still an ass, but friendly. Um. Anyways, uh, so you're looking for your dog. It's not in the kitchen, but you do grab some bacon. bacon. Yeah. I yell my dog's name, which is Roxy. Okay. It's not more than Bart. <laughs> so I scream Roxy and say I got bacon. I feel like when you scream Roxy. Off in the distance, just a little faint, you hear Bart yell, It's Morden! <laughs> but, anyways, you scream for Roxy. Mm -hmm. uh, you going upstairs or doing anything? I, like, stand by the stairs. Okay. Say, Roxy, I got bacon! Okay. Um, now it's been a while uh, since you guys have been here. Usually your dog comes fairly fairly quick. Mm -hmm. um, and it was weird because you actually have a really cool cool dog. Um, I mean, you've been you've been there for a bit. You still see Thorn and, and Perquin sitting there in the corner talking with the with the guy as you scream scream this. But your dog does not respond right now. I just tell everybody, especially you, to cover your ears. <laughs> okay, uh, what you getting ready? And then I blow the whistle. That's what I was waiting to see if you did. You blow that whistle. Now, the thing is, the reason why she tells you to cover your ears because it is made for animals in particular. And you're inflicted with something that really gives you sharper hearing. At first, I mean, she says this, you're, you're listening, you kind of 
catch what she said off the top of your head. Now, while you're in the group talking, you do kind of end up covering your ears real fast, which is kind of weird because that's why he kind of gave you this weird look while you covered your ears. But she blows his whistle. Uh, let's just say after you blow the missile with the missile, <laughs> after you blow the whistle, uh, 30 seconds goes by and you're getting ready to blow it again. And all of a sudden your blink dog named Roxy appears in the tavern. You just see doing, doing some circles, like look at Allison spots you and starts running it gets ready to jump then it blinks as soon as it blinks i need you to roll me a strength check no strength saving throw would you please that's a one and it stays a one as, as it blinks back oh, into existence, that dog face is right there in your face. Full mount spread with its paws as it hits you in the chest, knocking you over on your butt, landing there, licking the hell out of your face. As it also eats the freaking bacon out of your hand, then goes right back to your face. Just licking you like crazy. <laughs> Bart, what what is what is Bart doing in this particular time? Since he walked off stripping, pretty much out of his his breastplate. Yeah, I leave the as I go up the stairs. I leave I leave the breastplate behind the bar. Okay. <laughs> Go to my room. Uh, kind of do the same thing Bernice does. Just get cleaned up after being okay. Ten days in a hole. Well, shortly after Bernice gets out, you're able to hop. Well, you guys got multiple facilities actually, so yeah, yeah, you're you're able to hop in your own tub and and get cleaned up. Now this is also kind of weird because the tub holds one, but there is a there is a part of your guys's room where there's a bathroom. It's got the it's got the toilet or whatnot, but it also has side by side tubs, so two people can literally bathe at the same time in one room, but not necessarily you guys do it. Uh, in a couple of the larger rooms, they have their own uh, tub in the room as well, and then there's one communal yeah. uh, toilet as well in there as well, but. Uh, okay, so you get you get cleaned up and everything else. You go and chill and relax in your room for yep. a bit. Okay, all right. Spend some time talking to Valcuna. So, <laughs> oh yeah, what do you say to Valcuna? You know, I just do my regular daily prayers. And, okay. And, uh, focus uh, focusing on her. All right. Uh, so, camera the camera kind of pans out to the street street view. Sees your guys is uh you know pan, pans away after seeing Bart and what he's doing, pans away as that guy is leaving the tavern. You see the street view, you see the hustle and bustle going on. It's starting to pick up, uh, and it leaves. The camera then moves across the city to a Bertram who is just getting to his luxurious but well modest mansion. Yes, Bertram in our group is kind of the wealthy one in a way. But it's not necessarily his mansion. It's his family's estate where his father and mother still live. I forget, does he have any siblings? Step. Stepmother, that's right. Well, yeah. He has, he has two siblings. Two siblings, that's right. You, Bertram, are greeted warmly at the front door by one of the many... Uh, maids or whatnot but this one in particular is your uh your butler i forget did we say what his name was uh i do believe we did but... yeah i don't remember either uh but you're warm you're warm greatly by him as as you begin to turn the doorknob the door gets pulled open 
as he sees you, he goes, ah. Now, this is Ryan. I don't know what to say. Uh, what he says. <laughs> Uh, so I, I, would I say, would he say Lord? Does he call you Lord? Sure, but he wouldn't call him Lord. Yeah, but he wouldn't call him the blade either. No, no, he wouldn't because that's it. <laughs> Nobody knows. That. Yeah, that, that's his, that's his underground type title. But what, what is Bertram's last name again? Pyridos. Pyridos. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. So he would say, uh, gre- uh, it's been a while and greetings, Lord uh young uh Pyridos. are you here to stay probably not short visit oh, short sure visit away again well we my father home he uh, i believe he is home he is in a study your room is ready to go with fresh clothes always laid out on your bed and if you wish and desire, we can have a bath ready for you in a matter of a few minutes. Yes, please. Are you, is my lord hungry? Uh, no. No. Oh, very well. He shuts the door behind you. Uh, very well. I will have the bath prepared for you. you. Uh, he, he walks off, uh, now, I, I've described to you before, but as you walk in there, the foyer uh, of this mansion, um, you what you see when you walk in, it is fairly large. It's got double stairs that kind of wind around. Now, they're not attached to the wall. They're like uh, in the middle and kind of just wrap up so people can actually walk behind them and everything else like that. They're almost like free-flowing uh, with nice... Uh, grass like bronze grass colored uh trimming for the rails and everything that go up you got portraits hanging up the 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 the, on the walls uh you have your uh starting with your uh great great grandfather and his wife with his children on one on one wall going all the way to you your father and your 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 actual mother your birth mother uh, now again, you said siblings. Are they blood related, or are they step, or half? I, I forget if you say that. They, my brother is full. Okay, so you have you and your brother. Is, no, they're all. Full. They're all full. Okay, so it shows you your your birth mother and your father with your siblings, uh, and then sh- and then just another portrait, slightly bigger than that one, is now of your mother, of your stepmother, and your father, with. The three siblings with you and your two siblings also in the portrait, but it seems like I, I believe your mother is kind of, if I'm right, your mother's one of those uh, snobbies, right? Kind of, kind of an ass. Yeah, your stepmother's kind of an ass to you guys, mm-hmm. something like that, because you're not her kids. Yeah. She married your father probably for money, I believe, if that's for what sure. we went to. Yeah. So, so in that portrait, the mother is more pronounced in the portrait. With your father, and then it's like you're the the three of you are off to the to the side. Where the other portrait that had you and your family was the kids were up in front, in front of the parents. Now you guys are beside with the father in between you and the mother or stepmother. But anyways, uh, but it, it is nice. You got a nice little like uh, uh, chandelier type thing hanging down, you know, in the middle that they drop and light candles and replace candles and such. Uh, off to your left, I believe I, I said was the uh, the dining area. Uh, to the right, I believe I said you guys have a small library or so. That's a double double stacked library. Uh, now your father's study is actually he has a hidden door. He doesn't actually have a regular door. He has a hidden one because he does spend a lot of time in his studies, uh, doing business work and everything else. So he likes to keep the door hidden. So. People don't stumble upon it, happen to find it. Now, it's just uh, past the stairwell onto the right. Uh, he has two entrances, really. He's got, it, it's attached to the library itself. Library. Sorry, my wife always tells me I say that crap wrong. I got to pronounce it. Brary. It sounds like I'm saying berry like the fruit, right? Uh, anyways. Fruit of knowledge. <laughs> yeah, fruit of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so you walk, you walk between the two stairs. Just off to the little bit of right, uh, 
nobody would really notice, but you definitely do. Because uh, obviously you know it's your father. Now there is a, a portrait that hangs on the door itself as well, but it's of your father. And uh, one of his various uh, adventures that he's done, because I believe he also sell, uh, sails and goes overseas a lot. And this one is of him, uh, a portrait of him holding a crossbow, a large crossbow, uh, with one foot on a carcass or of an animal. Uh, and this one is a, uh, a large beast. And he's wearing, you know, that safari looking, you know, hat and stuff like that and everything. And he looks a little bit younger in this, in this portrait for sure. But that, that's exactly, he's holding this crossbow, one leg on, one foot on this beast. And it's just sitting there proud, like, yeah, I took this down type of thing. And of course, you know, it, it, it when you see it, I, I feel like Bertram probably would get a chuckle every time he sees it. Kind of like, I, you don't think he really did this. You think somebody else killed it and he just posed for it or whatnot. Uh, but you just tilt, just tilt it off to the side just a little bit. And when you tilt it, you hear a click uh, and the, and the door opens and then you let go and you hear the click again, but it's just the latch being pulled and then flipped. So when you move it just a little bit, it unlatches, opens up. And then when you let go of the portrait, the latch springs out, but it will click behind you when you shut it. Uh, and you open it up. And in fact, your, your father is there. Uh, he is there behind his desk. Uh, he has a stack of papers on one, you know, the classic, uh, workaholic, big old stack of papers or whatnot, but he has a stack of papers, who knows what they are for. And he's sitting there writing, uh, in a, in a, a ledger or what, uh, sitting there writing. And as you, uh, when he hears it, he goes, oh, what did I say about coming in here when I'm studying? Good morning, father. Oh, Bertram. He doesn't know his name is Bertram. He wouldn't call him Bertram. Bertram is his oh, alias. that's right. Bertram is an alias. I forgot. His, his name is the. They have the same name. Humbrath. So you're the fourth. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So to keep this simple, because I it's been a while since we've been up. It's it's definitely been a while since we've been up here. So, uh, you say that, and he goes, "Ah, oh, my son has returned." From his many adventures in the Underdeep. Or am I supposed to know that too? Oh, secret of you. Well, since you sent me. <laughs> well, why don't I've, you shut I've that come, door? I've come across some interesting things. Uh, do tell, do tell. Uh, sh shut, shut the door. And uh, he, he stands up. I mean, he... He definitely likes hearing your stories and stuff. He likes hearing what you got to say. Uh, as you shut the door, he stands up and he turns around. Now, he has a little mini bar. You know, like everybody does in their study if they've got money, right? You know, he turns around and he pulls up uh, like a little brandy almost type of glass and pours two glasses, sets one down on his desk and uh, sits there and goes, Come, come, sit, tell me. Bertram sits down in the chair. Um, starts to tell him about his last couple of ten days um, in the underground, coming across um, the owl bears and having that problem and being not rescued, but rescued by this dwarven party. Yeah, and, I think I remember you telling me then, about that. Uh, falling and then uh, falling in with that and and deciding to adventure with the dwarves for a while and uh, cleared out the third floor of the drow problem and now have an opportunity to make it further than they've ever been in the underground I believe we have finished uh, adventuring through the fifth level and have into the sixth level now mm -hmm. so very interesting so but my my question to you, son, is what is it about that book that you had old Hensworth uh, put over in the library? Uh, we found that because uh, I study and, uh, cannot read it. I just uh, thought it would be interesting. 
interesting to add to the library. I brought it back so that we could investigate it later. Well, because I can't really read it either. Yeah, I, I, I took but it. Would, it's interesting. interesting. We should take it in one of our contacts. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, I, I forget. Is your dad part of the Harpers? No. No. He's a horse trader. That's that's right. Horse trader, but he does other things on the yeah, side. Uh, yeah. Uh, does is he aware that you're a Harper? No. Okay. That's why it's secret work that you have. Uh, yeah, I got some few contacts we can uh, hit up and maybe look at this book. Uh, I took a gander at myself, and it looked like a bunch of gibberish. Um, and I could not read it myself. Uh, but yes, uh, I, I could call a few few experts and we can get them over here and maybe take a gander at this book and see what it does now this group uh tell me a little bit about them would you they own a tavern in coastal alley tavern you say huh it's, it's, it's a rundown shitty tavern it's kind of shitty gotcha but they're an okay now, as you say, this is an okay group. A knock on the door. As you're on the other side of it, uh, Hemsworth, say, uh, Lord, there's a visitor at the door that's wishing to speak to you. Well, uh, who who is it? Uh, they say their name is, I uh, just got to make sure I, I, I say this correctly. Uh, Helion. Moonstar. Uh, t take him over to the, uh, dining area. We'll, we'll be there. Do you know this Helion Moonstar, son? Never heard of. Well, why don't you come with me and we'll find out what this per who this person is, shall we? All right. He stands up, walks over to the door. On the other side of the door, there is a there is a handle. He turns it, opens it up. Uh, now the butlers and everything already they know how to get in there into this room, but they don't enter the room. They knock first. Any always they knock. Um, so anybody outside is looking like. They're knocking on a wall and talking to the portrait of your father. But you guys leave the room. You go over. And uh, sure enough, uh, there is a, a, a man. A well, well-mannered, well in fact. Human? No. Well, I mean, human, yes. Human person, sure, yes. Human as human, like, race-wise, not quite. Um, he looks half. In fact, he he looks half growl and half human, but he's well mannered, well dressed. As you two approach and and uh, approach the table and everything else, he stand he stands up. He was sitting, but as soon as you guys enter a room, he stands up, well mannered, stands up, and uh, he's he's here. Oh, greetings and salutations. My lords, uh, I am uh, Helion Moonstar. I am the grand nephew of Lady Waylon Moonstar, the, the matriarch of the Moonstar noble family. I'm pretty sure you've heard of them. Oh, yes, I've uh, heard of them, that name. Uh, sit, sit. What, what, what is it that I that, that's brought you here? Uh, you looking to acquire some... Thoroughbreds? No, no, sir. Um, actually, I am. I'm actually here on behalf of my uh, great aunt, um, head of the family right now. Uh, she has sent me here actually to speak to 
young lord here, um, your son. News has traveled around town about a group called the Door Smashers. And she has asked me to find you and request your aid. Now, I went to you because you seem to, from my understanding, from, this, from the sound of everybody in the group, you seem to be the more, I wouldn't say, uh, more approachable, the more level-headed, the probably the leader of the group. And I thought it'd probably be better if I come to you, good sir, and, and request that I ask you to bring somebody to justice for us. It's the stripper over there at the uh, nightclub. No. <laughs> uh, it's, it's it's a matter of a uh, family name. Um, see, we had some people tarnish our name, and before we could bring them to justice to face their consequences for tarnishing our name and everything, they ran. They ran and they hid in the Undermountain. Yes, yes. You see where this is going, right? I would be most appreciated if you would accept this, find this person, and bring them back. Now, we have sent somebody down there, but they have not returned, and we fear the worst. How long ago? Jesus. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm gonna uh, um he 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 pauses for a moment and he says it's been since <laughs> cocktail uh, yeah uh a good four months. Since we've heard them, since uh, since bef since just after the start of this year, and the, uh, who is he? The one we sent, or um, well, it's a long, long, long life family friend. Uh. Glaster, uh, G L Y S T E R. Glaster. I, I don't. I, does that sound right? Sure. Um. The thing is, is he is uh, well, special to our family, and he's also special himself. Uh, he is a brass dragon. He can change his form and everything. He's an actual dragon. Yes, he's an actual dragon. Thing is, he's pretty powerful, but he has not come back. We're quite worried about him. But we heard about your adventures already, how you guys went down there several times, come back up, gone further and further down deeper, and still have come back up. Most adventurers that go down there either come up and never go back, or they never come back. But your party, your group, seems to be a well-capable group. Who did you, who have you heard this from? About your group? Yeah, where are these? The papers. Rumors. It was in the papers. It was in the paper saying that <clears throat> that the death of Prasando Rosnir was confirmed. And that the names of the party members who have found this, including yourself, was also listed. 
So she thought it was best to send me. And uh, who is this somebody that we're supposed to be bringing to justice? Van Rick. Van Rijk. Van Rijk. V A N R A K. Should I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he has a name tag that just says, says, Hello, my name is. He's a moon star. Moon star. He is a moon star. He would most likely be a half drow person as well. That I have not read into very much here. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to see if see if it describes anything real quick. That that's what I was reading while you guys were just describing your characters. I was trying to <laughs> trying to read to see if there was a description of him uh, for you because I figured that was going to happen. Um, Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, we'll just say that that he uh, we'll we'll just call him human for now. Uh, because this is a half drow and this is a grand nephew of lady of the lady Moonstar who's uh asking for your help uh through her grand nephew. So I'm gonna say human for now. And I'll give you more details in it if I can uh, later on if I can yeah. uh, for for player reference. For now, we'll just say he describes the character, describes who you're looking for. Um, that one, that one, I just kind of I dropped the ball on that one. Trying to I was trying to find a description, and I just can't find one for right now. So uh, I'll I'll look into it and, and, and I'll get back to you on that one. Um, uh, he he does say. He does go say uh, uh, to go on that he'll you know he will offer you guys anything that you need and and compensate uh comp ugh. Uh, yeah compensate anything that you guys need or whatnot he their their house is willing to uh offer stuff that, that you may need if you if you accept can't say that I accept. We do find them. How do I get in contact? Um, just send word to our estate. It, it is. I mean, they are a noble, a noble family, so it's not too hard to find their estate. Uh, in Waterdeep or whatnot, and sending word is fairly easy. Just send is word. Is say alive or dead bounty? Prefer be alive. He must face charges that he has brought to our family. And she wants to see this justice done before her, before her life ends. And I wish to see her I wish to see her wish. I, I want to see her dream of this happening come true before she does perish. So you sent Gleister four months ago to look for Van Rick. How long's Van Rick been disappeared? Uh, it wasn't shortly after <clears throat> after we sent the dragon. Okay. Shortly. No, actually, sorry. Sorry. Uh, actually, it's... Been over, it's been about a hundred years, so I don't think she's human. I think she's elf. Yeah, yeah. We've been down there. Oh yeah, Maybe. and I think he's. I think the dragon was sent way before them too, as well. But I, I. So we'll backtrack it and set four months. He was. He's. He's been gone for years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's not get to it. 
<laughs> They're just now getting to this. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> uh, well, okay. Let me add it to it as well. They have sent other search parties, but nobody's re returned at all either. So we'll, we'll add that. We'll backtrack and I will put it on there. And uh, that they have sent other parties, but either either they don't come back or not all of them come back and they refuse to go down any further. I mean, you see some shit down there too. So you, you yeah. I mean, you understand a few things, you know, talks of a large freaking ass, uh, uh, gelatinous cube, green dragon. a green dragon in one place, uh, drow that are running around down there. Uh, Giant spiders, umber hulks, you know, many of stuff. Uh, but yeah, and it just so yeah, he asked you that. Uh, your response to to his request was, "Told him that we would uh, if we do go down. Not sure if the party would be agreeable. Not all of them seem to want to go down. There was no talk of it before I left." But if we do head back down there, uh, before I leave, I will send word to your state that we have departed. Uh, I'm going to try. I'm trying to tell you. I'm also seeing uh, if I wrote this right, if I said this right. So, sorry. <clears throat> like I said, I've been trying. I've been trying to read this here, and my my week's been messed up. So, uh, you do say that I, I might be changing some information just because. I'm I'm read I'm trying to read this as I as I go a little bit here, uh, because I didn't get it quite read my notes uh, yeah. all the way as I was doing this. So, uh, but yeah, they do want you. He, she wants you to uh, get Van Rick, Van Rick. Uh, to bring him to justice. Uh, they fear or they've been told that that dragon that they sent, uh, might have been corrupted. And is held captive uh, under spell wise, and that they are also asking you to free him from said spell if possible. Um, and apparently, <clears throat> Venric did take a small army with him when he went down there. So, and it. To his information, they have occupied one of the floors in the other mountain, and I believe it's called Vinric Doom. Vinric Doom. <laughs> um, well, if you cannot save the dragon, at least put it out of its misery. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, uh, son, it appears that you may uh, once again be departing. Awesome. Hmm. Well, your Avengers never cease. Uh, here, uh, he'll. He Hilan, 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 whatever, uh, stands up and says, well, if you do succeed, like I said, we will compensate you for your time and everything else with whatever you wish. I will take my leave and inform uh, Lady uh, Waylon Moonstar that you've considered the offer. Uh, he gets up and he proceeds to walk out um, with uh, the butler following behind him to let him out. <clears throat> now, what is Bertram doing after that leaves? Uh, Bertram um, tells his father that he is going to go to the Twin Death because he has 10 days of mud and, okay. and dry blood and dragon blood. 
<laughs> so okay. He just had the, the 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 buffer for that, and so he really couldn't go much. Okay. Uh, so um, as as you get up to start heading towards your room, uh, one of the female servants does uh approach in the dining hall and tells you, uh. Young master, your your bath is uh, ready. Thank you. And she walks off. You're welcome. And walks off. Um, so you go and take it. So, with that being said, we're going to kind of fast forward now. Is is anybody wanting to do something on uh to the, this day? Is there anything you guys in particular want to do? Uh, the, I I know it's been a while since you guys have come up from under under mountain and everything else. And that's kind of why we're right now in, a, in the thralls of uh, more of a role play type situation, and not down in the uh, excuse me down in the dungeon. Uh, so, is there anything that you guys are particularly wanting to do in town, or are you just wanting to relax? Uh, how is it that you're wanting to spend your uh, your your day at least? Because it sounds like a lot of you guys want to do a day, and then and then the next day go off and do something. So how are you wanting to spend the day? Um, we'll just go ahead and start with Per Quinn. Um, I need to stop off at a butcher and and uh, <laughs> and stop off at a butcher. Yes. Okay. And uh, I also need. To, I'd like to stop off at a scroll shop possible okay uh was there any particular uh thing that you're actually wanting to get uh at the butcher yes uh, wait is this the, sorry i don't mean to interrupt is, is this the one that the animal that we read across that we butchered for you or you butchered or somebody butchered and then we saved it no oh, uh yeah. sorry no it was a pig okay. that was a hog okay. that you guys butchered you, she she butchered it. Did we save it? Uh, I, I think so. I need to get rid of that. I think we ate some of it, but not. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, you, when you said butcher, I was like, yeah, maybe. Okay. Round two. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, Sorry I need blood. For me. <laughs> okay. So you want to see a butcher and everything else. Yes. And again, uh, right now we don't have a map uh, to Waterdeep uh, just yet. So unfortunately, I can't really zoom out to, to Waterdeep and and show that right now and just kind of put your icon or token there. So. For those that are watching, I do apologize. Right now, we're we're just we're on the uh, this screen here uh, for now until we can uh, until we go back to the dungeon or something. There is a map. Oh, do we have a map? Yeah. Of uh, Waterdeep. Yep. Go into your um, document. Your little tab at the top. Yeah. Oop. I gotta stand up for this because my screen here is not very big. Uh. I don't. I see that because you you flipped it over. Oh wait, I, I sorry, I'm on the wrong screen. Yeah, you're, you're I got yeah, I got two I got two two ma mice here. Um, where am I? Where am I looking at for that? Because I don't scroll it's... all the way down to the bottom. Yeah. Oh, untitled. Untitled. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. But our characters are all in the in the tavern. We would have to move them over to the other map. Uh, wow, this is this is a basic map here. Yeah, it's pretty basic. Yeah, it I gives you. Uh... The, the, the big streets. Oh, wow. Well, I don't know what I just did. See, it, it's not changing on that screen up there. Well, no, because I have to drag because you're 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 changing the scenery. On your end, oh, this is what's happening, right? Blurry. Okay, perfect. 
<laughs> maybe if I had glasses on, maybe. No, it's blurry. Is it blurry? It's blurry. Yeah. It's still moving around. Okay. Yeah, it, it took a minute. It for, minute to yeah, it took a minute on on my on my screen over here to uh, also this come into cool. focus. Close so the there it goes. All right. Question: City of the Dead is that kind of like at the graveyard? Yeah, the the city. Yeah, is this, it like New Orleans graveyards? So like the no, or above ground. Well, yes, it, it's a lot of it's uh, like catacombs. Okay, I think, yeah. Uh, but the City of the Dead is uh, which they have traveled. It's actually also a known park area where people go and they'll sit and they'll eat eat as well in there. It's also gated off and patrolled as well, um, but a lot of High rich people usually are buried right in there. Uh, yeah, that didn't stop you guys at all when you snuck in there. <laughs> at all, but it was still <laughs> it was still hilarious. Um, but for for the most part, like I said, uh, for the people that are watching, I'm just trying to. Okay, that's as far as I can zoom in. Uh, you guys are. Oh, where is Skull Alley? I'm trying to I'm trying to remember where it's at. For some reason, I want to say it was like right here. It's the longest in the place. Is it uh, that? I think I think it was right here. Is that? Yeah, yeah. This is it right here. Yeah, it's it's right here. This, this has got to be it right here, right? Because that uh, that looks like the buildings. Because that would be your tavern right here. No, nope, that's not it. Roll it. No, roll this way. I could have sworn that's, that's it. Right here, one I could have sworn that's it right here. I know, but song is good. Uh, I'm going to have this over right here. Oh. It's over here? No, nope, it's this right here. Uh, this strip right here. Okay. Yep. This well, see, right here in the corner. Yeah, right you, where your mouth is. Yeah, you can see where those buildings almost look like it was yeah. these buildings here. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are actually, okay, you guys are right here. Yep. And then Bertram's like over here, yeah, right? Yeah, this is like in the state over here. Oh, over yeah. here? Okay, so yeah, Bertram's like over here is around his state. On my side. Okay. Uh, it's not showing a ping on your side. Oh, I wasn't zoomed out all the way. Oh yeah, no cord. Okay, I'm I'm gonna mark. I'll mark real quick. Oh yeah, we did have to go south for that. See the dead. All right, so basically. Nice. Do you want a cookie? <laughs> right there is about where you guys are at for here. So I'm I'm just gonna mark it like that so that way you guys can see it. Uh that is that is where right now currently you guys are at. Bertram is elsewhere, uh which Bertram uh that you guys just heard talking is he, he is around over here. Correct. Yeah. Okay. He is right over here for his his state. So that's where Bertram is. The rest of you guys are in the other area. Uh, so you walk off. Uh, I'm just gonna say, yeah, you can definitely find a butcher. Um, in fact, actually, I think you guys have a butcher on your block. I believe. I believe that's right. Uh, there is a butcher not too far from this place at all. Uh, so you you walk in, and uh, it's a it's a barley of a. Uh, of a man. Um, we'll say he is a dwarf. Why not? He's a dwarf man. It is. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, he's got he's got an apron on and everything else. He does have a long sleeve shirt uh, on. Uh, his apron's covered with like some you know blood smears and stuff like that because he's you know obviously been butchering. Uh, you ring and everything else. Now, what what exactly are you trying to get or do with this butcher? I need some blood. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So you go in and you you, you tell he, he goes ah how do I help you? And you're just like I need blood. Uh, I'm making a uh, I'm making a uh, dish from my people that requires I don't, blood. I don't care. Blood? Yes. Yeah, I got plenty of it. Oh, one minute. Walks over, grabs uh, two silver. That works. 
And you basically get, um, he gives you about four pints worth of uh, pig's blood. Okay. Uh, fairly fresh. Uh, it, it took him. It took him a couple minutes to get it, oh. but okay. And then after that, you wanted to go to a scroll shop. Yes. Um, I believe there's one not too far from from there as well. From that from that strip, uh, there's somebody I believe that can probably sell or something like that. But uh, you go in. Uh, it, it's a it's a small but fairly it's a big small place okay it's a large small building meaning it's it's on the verge of being a medium-sized building but it's not quite there um but you go in and they have like uh books and tomes all over the place and everything else and uh it's a uh, human woman that runs this and she sees you and asks you uh hello what is it i can do for you i'm looking for two scrolls in particular one, okay. One called uh, Vortex Warp. Okay. And then one called Mimps Tiny Meteor, I think that's what it's called. Um, I'm not quite sure if you're in the right place. Uh, we sell parchments and scrolls uh, that are in Unchanted. These are just regular I need enchanted one apartments. I'm sorry, sir. I wish I could help you, but unfortunately I can sell you in scrolls and maybe you can find somebody to enchant these, but I I don't have any enchantment. You went to a station. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Screwed up it didn't say what I needed to. No. In particular enough. Okay, so well it's it's probably gonna end up taking a while to find that now. That's fine. Uh, I'll have you roll me a uh, a perception check. And all right. And we'll just see if you're even able to find anything like that. Um, and that spell you're looking for, it's called yes. what? Which one? Uh, the first one or the second one? Second one. Uh, Memphis, Tiny Meteor. It's a third level spell, I think. Uh, spell that for me, please. Milk, cement meteors? Yes, there we go. Milk, M E L F. Sorry. Milk. That's two tricks I got that. Yeah. Hmm. That's a sexy meteor store. <laughs> Okay. Uh, and did you roll that by any chance? I did. Yes, I did. Oh. Uh, and you still have a minus one, though, don't you? Yes. I think you still have one more day of rest. Okay. So, unfortunately, uh, that's, that's a 19. Um, that's not bad, but it's it's definitely going to take you a little bit to find. You're, you're going to be traveling further in the city. So, um and then what was the other the other one you're want to find? Vortex warp. It's a second level spell. Because th yeah, definitely the stuff like this definitely gonna give me a heads up so that way I can yeah, do some more. I didn't think about it until uh, yesterday. Oh. Yeah. Seen your face. I don't think anybody else has seen your face. Yeah. Uh, should should have had the cameras and everything off on that one, but you're fine. I think we already did that. I don't know why your light is on though. No, I, I showed my face right there. Oh, it did. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious that you did that, dude. Um, okay, so 
All right, so uh, let's see here. Okay, I'll get back to you on this. Okay, that's fine. Uh, who who else is wanting to do something real quick for the day? Because again, uh, this is your free day, and then you, yeah, well, hell yeah, the the first day. So, so what 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 are what, what's your plans for the day now? I'm gonna go upstairs. Okay. Even if my dog is in my arms. Sure. Okay. I'll go upstairs. Find Bernice. Uh huh. Bernice. This is my turn. I'm gonna knit my cat a sweater. <laughs> So you're gonna spend most of your day just knitting? Yes. Is just going through the knitting proficiency. Knitting proficiency. Okay. Downtime. Try to get that knitting proficiency up. Okay, and that's all you plan on trying to do is just knit a sweater. You still have to tune for that one, have you? I don't understand how I will attune to it and then knit the sweater. Okay, so you want to reattune to your wand that you unfortunately got unattuned. Okay, that's fine. Okay, is there any other any other plans for the day? I might have to go buy some supplies. Like what type of supplies are we talking about? If they're basic supplies like just like food or something like that, that's fine. Just we'll say you did it throughout the day. If it's a certain type of items, then we can check something else out. Like things like beetles and yeah, that's fine. You you can you just go down the street and get some of that stuff okay. from locals. Okay, so that's what you're gonna do. Uh-huh. Cool. We'll move on. Uh, Bernice, Mal came up to you and kind of talked to you for a bit. But do you have any plans to spend for for the day? I was going to um, go to my temple church and um, enlighten. Okay. All right. So after you've spent a little bit of your you time cleaning up and everything else, you clean up your armor and everything else, uh, you don back on your armor and your weapons and everything. I'm, I don't know if I believe it. I, I mean, Probably, I guess. Yeah. Take them with you? Okay. So you don back on everything and you go out to, to the temple and everything else. Okay. Uh, Bart, is there anything particular you're going to do as your sister has now decided she's going to run to the temple? I am going to sit on the patio of the Door Smashers in bed and do what I'm telling myself I'm going to do for 10 days and then just retire. <laughs> you're just going to retire? <laughs> on, pretend I'm retired. On the, on the balcony, you said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, did you want to go? Question is, you said balcony, but you guys got a a, a, a very, like, up top, uh, yeah, like a roof thing that I believe you guys planned, did some plants and did, like, yeah. a little, like, plant yeah. garden type gonna thing. Go You're going to go up there? Yeah, still. Okay. And have. And I think there was a statue, too, built or something. Like okay. Okay. Good enough. Do you spend most of your. You spend your day drinking, relaxing, and eating on the roof, watching stuff happen and fly by. And while you're there, you're like one of those, uh, <laughs> I say one of those old people you are. <laughs> it's like your cruise you took, sitting on the deck, lounging, just watching yep. people go by. But instead of just watching people go by, you got a city instead of an ocean yes, right. in, in front. And you see all kinds of stuff happen. You saw, you just, you literally witnessed down an alley. You're like, oh, that person's going to get mugged. Oh, oh, there they go. They're getting mugged. <laughs> but uh, you're retired. You don't give a fuck. Maybe, maybe you shoot an eldritch, eldritch blast down that way. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, you, you know, you see, you see all kinds of stuff happen. You saw people getting in fights and arguments. Uh, carts, uh, one cart tipped over and they were trying to turn, you know, turn it back up. Uh, you saw uh, Mal leave. I mean, come back. You saw uh, uh, Perquin running up and down the streets uh, half the day, uh, and then we're going to flash over to Thorn. Thorn, how, after this is after you guys got done with the conversation of the person. What? How are you spending your day? Uh, your off day? Well, I thought about going. I'll probably be up there with Bart, honestly. So you're just going to ch- go upstairs, find Bart, and just chill with him upstairs and yeah. relax. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've taken quite a beating this this session. <laughs> okay. I'm going down to the 
quite, quite a bit. Yeah, 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 I actually was able to hit you with a few people this time. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, Mal, you return. You've got your supplies and everything else. You spend your day and everything else. Uh, come back. You find a place. Now, I'm going to roll a percentile to even see if they even have those scrolls. Uh, so let me get this out. Now, I like to roll with actual dice. And this is me saying it for the viewers. We, we do have a few people watching. Uh, I like to actually roll with actual dice. I don't roll on roll 20. I roll actual dice because, hey, I bought them. I want to use them. So, uh, okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, that's for one scroll. That's for the other one. You needed 50% or higher, basically. For me, I was doing 50-50. Well, yeah, I was doing 50-50. Uh, if you got above 50, they had a, had a scroll. If it was below 50, they didn't have a scroll. One of those scrolls they don't have. You can't really find it, but they do have the other one. Um, the scroll you find at the shop is the Vortex scroll. Okay. They, do not, they do not have the other one. Um, now, the thing is, this is not a common spell scroll because it does cost put up there to, to write and everything else to enchant stuff. But you find it. It's a small shop. Um, they have a variety of magical goods that they resell. Uh, the person you see is a... Um, You know what? We're gonna say this person because I love I love doing this when it comes to magical goodies. <clears throat> they are a uh, gnome, a male gnome. Uh, he has one little. He's got uh, that little monocle thing going on that he has in one eye. Uh, he has a little bit of knickknacks here and there. Now the thing is, you you didn't really go to the big store. Uh, well, actually, you went there first. They didn't have it. Um, and the person said, well, you can check with her cousin, uh, and, and, and they sent you off over here, and this is the, the person. Because the, I think you were there when I told you about that big place. It's a small one, but when you go in, it's like yeah. three or four stories. It's a tent. magically enchanted-looking type tent thing going on. Yeah, so he says, hey, uh, he directs you there and says, uh, check out my cousin. He may have it. I don't carry any of that stuff. I don't carry those two scrolls that you're looking for. He happens to have one. Uh, so you see him, and he's like, hey, how are you? Hello. Yes. I'm looking for uh, a uh, couple scrolls. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we got scrolls. Uh, I'm looking for a scroll called Vortex Warp. Okay. And then... I know, you do. I'm going to just say it. <laughs> what? Yeah. Mills, Mills, uh, Mills, Minute Meteors. Yeah, don't have that one. I can tell you right now, I don't have that one. Uh, let me check for the other one. Uh, la, 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 la. yeah, I, you're, you're in luck. I do have the Vortex Warp yeah. right here for you. Uh, but it's, it's not very cheap. Okay, how much? Uh, 1200 gold. You should take 900. Persuasion. <laughs> Even with a minus one, that is still pretty darn good. Uh, okay, so a 22. And for those that don't know, because we know as a group why you have a minus one to a lot of your rolls. So you died at, at one point. You, like, completely died. He failed all three of his death saves and died. Well, he got brought back with a resurrection-type spell or a... Not a resurrection, but a spell that brought you back, right? Yeah. Well, no, it wasn't Revivify. It was the other one. It was the other one because he was dead, dead. Yeah, he was dead, dead. Raised dead. Yeah, raised dead, which puts a penalty on him for four days. So for four days, he has to rest to get one penalty off of that. So he went with minus four. He's down to minus one. 
right now. So with that being said, he kind of looks at you and is like, uh, I'll do it for one thing. You seem to be a, 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 type, a type of person that uh, uh, is a magic caster, right? Yes. I want you to prove it to me. Prove it to me that you're a magic caster that can, that deserves that discount. And I will be glad to reduce it down to 900 gold for you. <laughs> I don't think he has Mage Hand. Do you have Mage's Hand? I don't have Mage's Yeah, he doesn't have Mage's Hand. Plus, he would see it, too. Because he's not a rogue trickster who has invisible Mage Hand. <laughs> Thanks. So, how do you want to show him that you are a magic caster worthy of this scroll? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if he was uh, if he was a Miri, maybe. But no. <laughs> Anyways, uh, what do you want to, to show him? Uh. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, prestigitation. I want him to soil himself. Huh. Yeah. So you do that, and he's like, "I'm waiting. What are you doing?" I already did it. Soiled yourself. So, did you make him shit himself or piss himself? Shit himself. Ah, oh, so he looks down and goes, ah, mm. so I have. He snaps his fingers, it's gone, and now you soiled yourself. Uh, <laughs> I snap my fingers and do the same back to him. Yeah, this time it doesn't work. Shit. No, it didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> this time, that doesn't work. And instead, he just laughs. They go, okay. So you're you're a funny guy. Yeah, I got you. All right, we'll do a thousand. A thousand? Nine fifty? No, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to stick with uh, with a thousand on this one. All right, do a thousand. All right, you got a thousand gold? Yeah, I got a thousand. Okay, take that off, and I'll let you have this. You'll have to write down the scroll of vortex warp. Yep. And uh, from there, we will. Uh, flashback over. <coughs> you two have been chilling on the rooftop. You went over to your temple. We're flashing over to your temple. Visit. You see the big uh, temple. This temple, like I've described before, which I'm going to describe now again. This temple is it's home to many deities, many god worshippers. Not just yours, but many of them are housed here. You go to your section of the temple that uh, that is that is uh, tied off with your worship person and everything else, and you go over there. Is there anything in particular you're trying to accomplish, um, or I just want to visit? Just visit uh, and just uh, give thanks. Okay. Well, you're greeted by um, other patrons of this uh, deity uh, and everything else. You do see the uh, the higher. Uh, the high, I, I call him a bishop type person, but you see the higher uh, monarch or major, what? Priest. Priest, thank you. You see the higher one that you spoke to before, you know, he's there and, you know, he kind of does a little bow to you as you walk by, you know, most of the people that are there, uh, you know, they kind of greet you and, and whatnot, just do a little bow. Uh, but you do go over to a statue of your deity. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you do go over to your uh, statue of your deity or whatnot, and you can see other little uh, other patrons of this deity that are already kneeled down, uh, doing their blessings and everything else. They're not priests of there, but there are other clerics or other worshipers that are also there that are uh, in prayer. Uh, you go over and kneel down and begin to give a prayer too, right? Okay. Uh, just for shits, can you give me a... Uh, a percentile, uh, percentile uh, roll. Yes. Okay. Sixty-one. Sixty-one. Cool. After you get done praying uh, your prayer, um, when you get up, you feel warm. You feel comfort, relaxed, almost like you've been on vacation for a month you just feel all that weight just slump off of you until the end of the day you have advantage on anything that you do 
All right. Awesome. As you head back or whatnot, so you have advantage on anything. I don't know whether it's you're going shopping and want to waggle or haggle. That's what I was actually going to do. I was going to see if I could, because um, I think I'm going to need some more. If we go back down, I'm going to need some more diamond because I'm pretty sure I used a couple. Of okay. Them. Well, you know exactly where you got to go for that. Yeah. And that's where you head to the tent. You go to the tent, you go walk in, and you see it again. You see the, the as you walk in, poof, it just blows up to this big, uh, big building. It's actually, it looks like a building inside. Outside, it looks like, uh, like a little pop up tent type thing, you know, not, not very big. Um, uh, but when you walk in, it's just massive. Um, greeted. Uh, this is run by gnomes. Um, I don't think I really gave it a name last time or nothing, but, uh, it, it's one of those things like, if you know where it is, you can find it. But if you've never seen it before, you don't notice it. Type of type of things. But they get business. They have they're really good at business. Uh, but you go in and it's run by gnomes and everything else. Uh, and you're greeted by that female gnome that you've seen before as she walks in. And goes, oh hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? What can I do for you? Um, I need uh, three diamonds. I need two that are worth five hundred and one that's worth a thousand. Jeez, you got three suitors? No, these are for my spells. Oh, oh, you want spell? Oh, spell diamonds. Okay, yes. Oh, I was going to say, what a lucky lady, but you're asking them to marry you. I was going to say, that's a little weird, but okay. I mean, it's, I'm not going to judge. I mean, you do you, girl. That's fine. Okay, come over this way to my table. Now, th this is also weird because each little gnome, when they greet somebody, they have their own, like, table of business. They got their own little registers or whatever you want to call it. They got their own little tables. And there's about three tables. So there's at least three gnomes that are walk that walk around that greet people that follow and take care of you personally at a time. Now you do hear off in the back, you hear clutters and noise and all kinds of stuff behind the curtains and stuff like that. You already know there is something else going on back there that somebody does enchantings or whatnot that's back there. But anyway, she, you sit up the table and she goes, okay. She pulls out a small bag, sits it down, and she shows her hand in there, but her hand doesn't just go in there. It's like up to her elbow because this is, you recognize, a bag of holding. As then she pulls out a box, opens up the box, and lays out three diamonds worth approximately what you asked for. And she goes, um, I will sell it to you. For that cost because you are repeat business so you want two of 500 one of a thousand okay so we're looking at two thousand gold so she goes I'll, since you are a repeat customer i will send you sell it to you at a reasonable cost two thousand gold pieces normally they upsell for a little bit of a profit but for you she's going to sell you at cost so you can haggle if you want to haggle you know, you know, you can if you want. If you want to persuade to try to get a bigger deal, you certainly can. <laughs> They're already giving me enough deal. They're not making any profit off of it. Well, yeah, because I mean, you guys have been in here before, and you know that you bought and stuff that it was it was pretty expensive. And I think last time they charged you this, it was almost two hundred gold higher. Than what she's offering now so and and these will fit back into those pendants that you've had before so they'll fit right back in. it's fine yeah uh, so you're gonna lay out two thousand yep. and just buy it yeah. okay she'll thank you thank you anything else i can help you out with here because i mean i'm here I, we find something else you need anything else i don't Okay. All right. So <clears throat> from here, uh, from here, she, uh, you, you leave and you head back. Yeah. Okay. Again, just for the sake of it, they will fit it back into those pendants. Okay. Um, so uh, basically, just to let other viewers know, um, what she had, what she, what she done is actually she puts uh, these diamonds in pendants, like necklaces or whatnot, and gives them to the other uh, party members. So when they go down. She can place her hand on top of the diamond, cast Revivify, or whatever spell it's going to cost that much. In this case, probably not the thousand gold one. 
That one you're probably going to hold on to yourself. That one's, yeah. But they have the other one where they can let, she can lay her hand down, cast Revivify, it'll eat the stone up, but it's already right there for them to come back up. So you can replace the pendants with whatever you need to. So otherwise, you head back home, and that's all you're going to do for the day? Uh, yeah, I think I have time to sit up on the roof. Like, I okay. find out where everybody is. Later on that evening, uh, Bernice shows up and is now joining you guys with uh, the other two dwarves with ale and drinks and food. Uh, shortly after, before then or whatnot, Peter shows up back at the tavern. And, of course, Mal is done knitting a sweater for her key. Guys, reattuned to my walk. And you're reattuned to your walk, yes. Um, <laughs> for now. Oh. Uh, so, you guys spend the afternoon, or the evening, I should say. You guys spend the evening uh, dining, drinking, having a good time, and everything else, correct? Uh, you go back downstairs, uh, you head, head to bed, bar, the bar closes, and you guys uh, wake up the next morning. Uh, nothing, really, uh, nothing really happened to you guys at all during the night. I don't have anything really planned. So, you, know. you guys have a good night's sleep in your own beds. You don't got to worry about casting a spell for a dome, whether you do it or not. Uh, Bertram, you slept in your big ass bed with your twenty pillows and. I bet my servants up. Sure, uh, as long as they're not magical supplies, just regular just supplies. Regular sure. Stuff for the bed. Okay, if it's something special, let me know. So. Yeah, I, I just we'll just put it at cost. They know they know where to get it. Do we want to empty the bed? Do we want to empty the bag of holding a little bit? <laughs> I probably could have should have got the, some of that stuff inspected whenever you were out. Yeah. Do what? Um, oh, the bag of holding list? Yeah. Well, we'll just say you did, and then when we get the list again, we'll you, you can just say which what you moved over. It's fine. Uh, okay, so you guys meet back up at the Door Smashers Inn. Uh, Bertram shows up a little later uh, in the morning. Uh, he shows back up, but you're all there eating your breakfast, um, trying, you know, waking up, getting ready for the day. And from there, Bertram walks in, sits down with you guys at the table. What do you guys want to do for the day? Go, uh, go. I gotta go report back to my captain about what we found. What we found. Why did you go yesterday? Uh, tired. I'm exhausted. You got six minutes? Good. You can hold it for six minutes? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll go to, we're going to go to break here in about six okay, minutes. Yeah, yeah. Or so. Um, okay, what was it? Go see my captain. Okay, you could have done that yesterday. Yeah, we could. <laughs> I'll just, my character. Bart was giving me the business. Oh, okay. Why did you? Your okay. highness. <laughs> What were you waiting for? Just stay drinking. I was lounging at the Royal Bug. <laughs> okay, so you, you de- so you depart you depart in the morning to go speak to your captain. Yeah. Okay, sure. We'll we'll flash it over. You're uh, back at the uh, the the barracks yeah. area, uh, the the head office or whatnot that's there uh, with your captain in there. Doors wide open. You bang on the uh, frame, and he uh, says, "Ah, it's you, Thorn. Come on in. How may I help you?" Um, we just got back from six, seven, six, six. six. We just got back from uh, six, six floor, and I explained to him what we discovered. Okay. All right. Uh, did you have any questions or anything that you were wanting to tell him, or are you just checking in? Oh, uh, checking in. Okay. To report to then tell him that I'm head back. Okay. Do you mention anything about what you found out about your lineage, lineage or anything? Do you say anything about that part? Uh, really? Should I really? Uh... Did you? They only know you. They know you by Thor. That's all they call it. That's anybody ever calls you is Thor. They don't. That's all. I just. I'm just asking. If you mention anything about that particular room that you found and, and stuff, do you mention any of that or you leave that out of your report? Probably gonna have to mention it. Okay. Um, 
So. <laughs> so you mentioned it to him. Yeah. I'm just waving it over. You mentioned it to him. Basically, what you're mentioning to him is uh, you found out that somehow or another you are a king. And when you say that, he stops what he's doing, kind of looks at you, and goes, <laughs> you, you, a king. That's a good one, Thorin. That's a good one. You put some pranks on me before, but this one, this one, my friend, this is uh, this is the this is the best one yet. This is the best one. Get the fuck out of here now. Just go, just go, just go. <laughs> All right, and that that's it. You're just kind of reporting into yeah. everything else. Okay, and then you leave. Uh, we'll swipe back over. You're back at the bar. Everybody's still there, but they're pretty much getting their gear buckled up. Uh, Bart has doing the last latch on or last buckle on his freaking uh breastplate and everything else um so what's the plan guys what do you what do you guys want to do we're just sweater i'll pay you 500 gold to make a mitchell and this straight axe to make a mitchell straight axe And, and I'm the brokest person here. You you see you see Plume, by the way, going like well, what's this about uh Thorn being a king? What? I mean no other patrons in here just yet. This is <laughs> or uh Floon has come in because he you know he doesn't live here. He's walked in for the day. He's He's drinking his morning drink of coffee or whatever, and he's eating a little bit. <coughs> he just, <coughs> what, 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 what's this about Thorn being a king? Um, nah, somebody told him to do something. So, his royal highness. Yeah. Maybe you should. Because, uh, because I mean, I, I was, I was going to see if there was any way I could get a raise. I mean, I'm just. I don't have any finances. <laughs> I mean, your highness. <laughs> You telling him this, you know, he plays into your guys' joke with it and everything else. <laughs> and, and then he goes back and he just eats. He, he plays into you you saying it's a joke. Uh, okay, so so what's what's the, what's the plan for uh, Door Smashers? Uh, what, what do you guys want to do? Why do you tell us? Wait, you don't even know this. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. Nobody so, knows what, what did your friend uh, say yesterday? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the. He wants us to go back to the under, uh, under mountains, uh, and we need to find something that this group of dwarves stole from the embassy, uh, the the spider's eye. Why are dwarves? Why are dwarves stealing stuff? They're they're most likely mountain dwarves. Bart likes to say say the evil dwarves. No, those are drow. Drow. Evil dwarves. Gugar. Gugar. Yeah. Those are evil dwarves. Why can't be? Why can't all dwarves just be like this? Anyway, because they're spoiled. (laughs) They had a whole map for themselves. (laughs) Bertram says, "My fairies are in order." Oh, I'm ready to go. oh, yeah, I forgot my will. Uh, an adventure that's required, isn't it? If you didn't update, if you have nothing to update on your previous will that you wrote before you went down, oh, yeah, that's fine. Then, then it's still there. Okay. I mean, it doesn't get opened unless you are, uh, unless you die. You don't want to add me to your will, Your Majesty? <laughs> <laughs> all right so you guys you guys get up after finishing and everything else doesn't mention anything else about it. okay all right no that's completely fine he keeps it to himself um you guys get up you head outside are you taking the carpet ride yes yeah, the carpet ride. 
What floor are you guys heading back to? Now, you haven't finished the sixth at all. You haven't finished. You, you still got plenty of it to find. <laughs> wow, what, what? that's a random number you want to go to? Wow. just the very bottom. It goes straight to the source of it all, huh? Yeah, that's, that's going to be a short campaign. It, 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 well, it's a long campaign, but it'll be short and really fast. Yeah, I know, the rest of this day is going to be really short. Uh, okay, so you, guys, you guys are already going to the third floor as it is. Um, because that's, if you're, if you're taking the carpet, because that's where the, uh, the waterway takes you to the third floor. Um, fifth floor is where, uh, the, uh, the, the daytime enchantment thing is going on with the elf yeah. druid that's down there. Do not go back there. That is the fifth, but to access the sixth or even the seventh floor, you have to go through that floor. Unless you know the shortcuts, which unfortunately most of the shortcuts aren't going to be what you want to take. Um, but third floor is where you're going to come out of of the waterway. It takes you to the third floor for uh, Skull Keep or Skull uh, Skull Port. Yeah, that's where that's where that's going to take you is around there. Uh, then you're going to go further down. There's the fourth floor, which you guys liberated the um, fourth floor from the Drow, as well as the um, Abolith. Yep, yeah. Abolith that was down there. And then the fifth floor, as you guys approach that floor, it is daytime, uh, early morning. What do you think is probably all the way down? But you can go you go past the fifth floor. You, you you know right where the sixth floor is. And you got a hint on where the seventh floor is, but you haven't quite finished the exploring the sixth if you like to hit the sixth floor. So if we go to the sixth floor, the last thing we did there was the temple. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we can go back and make sure the temple. Didn't we just get in from the fifth floor? We can make sure to in the second floor or something. We know that on the fifth floor they already came to the second floor. And we know on the fifth floor they came to the sixth floor. What robotic thing are you talking about? Yeah, the robotic thing where we ran where we never went to. And we got reminded of it because we had oh. things in front of us. Okay, as okay, DM to players. What she's what she's referring to is you guys found a insignia ring, I think it was, that matched a roaming, uh, I think shield golem or something like that, uh, up on the second floor. It matched the uh, the insignia. The the ring matched the uh, the eye the, the the insignia on that as well. Did none of you want but, to look at it? But no, but only only she looked at it. She's just, min, this is Mal's player kind of mentioning that real fast. Because we but. could go back to the second floor, so we had to ask her if we did. Because then we have the portal. Yeah. Were you guys only able to do spiral time? Yeah, spiral time. Do you know what floor it was on? Uh, no, you just had to look no. for it that they went to the Endermountain. Uh, he said, he, one, they two, said three, it happened. Five. He said he's been waiting for a few days. What? It was the previous four months. Well, I don't know if that's two, well, three, or three. <laughs> I said we. Collectively. You may have been there. The three. <laughs> so, hit below the bell, I see. <laughs> so, real quick, before, because before, we're, we're going to take a short, we're going to take a short break. Um, I just want I just want to know where where we're going to I see one saying we're just going to go straight to six anybody objecting to that okay I got one vote for the second one because she wants to go back and check that out I'm curious about this okay so that's two for a second floor I'll say second sure why not? You know, you're being outvoted, but you have two votes for six. I'm not driving the carpet. <clears throat> okay. She's not on the carpet even. Okay. So, uh, this this is uh, we're past our, our two hour mark by a few minutes, but uh, we are going to take a quick break uh, to use the restrooms and to allow uh, a player to have a cigarette break as well. Um, so we're going to do that real quick. 
Um, it, it'll be uh, 10, 10, 15, 10, something. If we can do a 10 minute break, uh, would that be good yeah. for you? Okay, well, we're going to do a 10 minute break. Uh, I'm going to set up the floor as well. Um, I, right now, the only thing I have is a be right back screen. I was planning on trying to do something where it showed your guys' uh, character sheets like on a slide just so people can kind of like see your stats and everything. I do not have that set up, so unfortunately that's not going to be there. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to leave it up like this for now, for this time. So the, um, uh, so I'll have I'll have the mic and everything. Everything will be on. Uh, you guys, if you need to use the restroom, go ahead and do a restroom break. Uh, I'll set the timer for 10 minutes. And then, uh, and then from there we will uh, continue on with our game. Sounds so, like a plan. That's good with y'all. And my my watch is so stupid. It's like ninety eight hours. We took a, a long rest, right? Yes, uh, you guys would have completed a long rest, which means somebody is no longer penalized. Let's see the full might of the whole day. <laughs> yeah, the way he's rolling, that that's not. Yeah, he, he he's been rolling too too good right now. Uh, he always rolls good on the. Like, okay, so it it actually popped up there and said you're no longer exhausted, on the screen. So. Oh, you're just. <laughs> where are you taking us on the screen? Because I I cannot. I had I had it I had it flipped over for something else, but unfortunately I cannot. You you can't. <laughs> you got more control over this screen than I do right now. Uh, that's hilarious. All right. Uh, just I'm just putting it here in the chat. We, uh, which they can they can hear me too, but I'm gonna put it in the chat. We're uh, uh, okay. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna. I just put I put it. Oh, that's what that was. Yeah. I saw that that was. I thought it was smoke. <laughs> well, uh, so, all right, so we're, do we want to bring up, well, I, I guess I'm going to, I'm going to look real quick to make sure that that's the floor that I told you. I say, you didn't want to darken that tunnel. Shouldn't it already be? Well, actually, we've seen it. Yeah, you guys have been all over that floor. Yeah, I'm just. We are on mute. No, Mike's not on mute. Mike's still hot. Uh, I can mute it. No, I just. Nah, nah, we're. Yeah, we're just, we're just taking a quick break. Um. Ten, a quick ten minute, which we have, I think, eight minutes left. So. Uh. I forgot to text you yesterday because huh? Justin pointed out, he's like, hey, you should text him up. And I said, I will. And I got stuck at Central all day. Uh, text me about what? About those scrolls. Yeah. Yeah. When it, when it, um, when it comes to ma magic stuff, I kind of like to be told ahead of time. So that way I can price it. Because um, I do like to price it to where you guys can haggle. But there's also times, depending on the situation, I may just tell you whatever. Um. But yeah, it would have it would have been it would have been definitely nice to know yeah. uh, ahead of time. But it, it's fine. Um, this is your first time, I think, actually trying to buy something magical. Yes, I told other people in the group that before. But uh, okay, so real quick, um, trying to figure out where that thing was. No, it's it's back on the first floor. It's on the first floor, not the second floor. Yeah, I, I believe it's on the first floor. I think I think it's on the first floor. Um, so is that one of the two inspiration yep. points you did? <laughs> um, okay, so uh, chat. Uh, since Mike is hot, I'm gonna just go over a few things that we normally do. Um, Actually, I could I could also do this too, real quick. Um, we got this going. I can actually blink. Ah, there I am. All right. So, um, real quick, the break uh, group's taking a 
taking a break. Um, so what we'd like to do, we do have some home brew type rules and then uh, others that we don't. Um, one of the rules that we follow um, in our in our campaign or in our group is we do a um, a, a critical thing. So uh, when you roll a nat, nat 20 to hit, instead of doubling your dice or like rolling double the dice uh, or rolling dice and just doubling it, period. So if you roll uh, 4d6s and you get... Um, 12 uh and instead just doubling that number to 24 uh what we what we do is we actually because it, it sucks when you roll like ones and twos on a natural 20 and you only do eight points of damage on a natural 20. we do uh what we do is uh i take those four dice so the max damage or max number on the dice of 46 would be 18. right yeah no Six times four, 18, isn't it? Yeah. Six times four? Yeah, no, it's not. It's 24. 24. I'm off by one die. <laughs> uh, would be 24. So what we do on a natural 20 is instead of rolling half the dice and doubling it, I automatically give you 24 on the max. So that, uh, so four, four D6s would be half or would be max. You roll the other four D6s and you add it to that 24 plus your modifier. So that is the homebrew that we do as far as attacks go. So if you guys notice, like uh, when, when we do get into a, when they do, when the players do get into a battle or combat and they roll a natural 20 and you hear me say something like 20, okay, uh, you got, what's, uh, what's your max damage that you can do or, or what's the die of that weapon? And they say 2d6s and I say, okay, that's 12. And then if they're pumping anything else into it, that would be uh, dice like uh, Divine Smite. Uh, where they add two more d8s, I'd be like, okay, that's 12 plus the um, two d8s, which is 16, so that's 28. Uh, then it'd be plus their modifier, and then they roll the dice, and that's what we do for crit. Now, they do that, and I also do that as well on my side. So whatever, basically what we do is whatever they do on their side, I can do on my side of the screen as well. So they agreed to do this. So if my characters have, if the creatures happen to hit them and hit them with a natural 20, I do the same thing uh, to them as well. Um, that, that is just one of the, one of the rules that we, that we do. Uh, we don't do flank, flanking in our group um, in, on this campaign. Uh, the main reason why we don't do it is because a lot of times I'll throw in um, a lot of enemies for them to fight and they will surround them real fast um so instead of adding flanking i just went ahead and said no we're not doing flanking so no we don't do flanking here the other thing we do do that the dude that we do do, <laughs> do do uh the other thing that we also uh do in this group is whenever somebody rolls a natural one or they fail on an attack roll uh i have a chart that i will have them roll a um a percentile or d100 and then from there, I will look at the chart and I will see, um, <laughs> I will uh, look at the chart and see what happened. Now, if if when I look at the chart, if it does not um, affect them in any way, I will just ignore it and say, yeah, this isn't going to do anything to you. So we'll just go on. Um, I do have a critical table, too, where if somebody does hit a critical, I do have a critical table that I can have them roll on and do that. And it's only really for uh, melee. I think we have another one for spellcasting. Um, but for right now, that's what we have. Um, and again, shout out uh, to everybody who's viewing. Thank you, uh, Twinkie Dinky, for um, participating in the chat. I do appreciate that. Um, and, and everybody else who is also viewing. Uh, I know it, it, it is a little bit of a, a drag, but if you are a fan of D&D, &D, um, even though it can seem a little slow, it, it is still fascinating just watching other people play and seeing what they do. Um, we are using Roll20 for those that have been uh, here watching uh, from the start. We are broadcasting with Roll20 um, for our table. We don't have video other than mine that I have here. If one video person, if somebody does accidentally pop up on a video screen, I do apologize. He gets a little antsy and 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 accidentally turns stuff on he shouldn't turn on. Uh, that that's that's one thing can happen. He just accidentally clicks something he shouldn't have been clicking on. Um, 
he has ADHD. He yeah, ADHD. <laughs> uh, we have a player who has ADHD, so he, uh, he yeah, um, it's it's perfectly fine. Um, is there any other uh, rules that we normally that we do that are like our house rules? Um, I mentioned the crit crit roll that we do, which if you hit an if you hit a critical. Instead of just rolling double the dice or doubling the number on the dice, we automatically do max damage on the dice and then you roll. Is there anything else you can think of? We also don't do flanking in our group. I feel like there's another house rule that we do that. Got it around the corner. I feel like there's another house rule that we do that I can't remember. I still got some of my drink. Um. Yeah, I still got some of my drink. Um, now we'll say that at, at our group we have we do have somebody who, uh, if we're not sure um, how something works, uh, he does he looks it up and tries to find um, to find to find the ruling on that in case uh, there's any um, miscommunication between the DM and the player. Uh, He'll find the ruling and, and let us know. And if that's the case, we'll backtrack on that one as well. Um, um, other than that, actually, I believe it's the first floor. Now I'm looking at the map. I think it was the first floor you guys came across it. But I'm, I'm still trying. I'm still trying to figure out which uh, which floor it really is here. So. Um, I, I feel like that it would be down here, but I just don't believe it. I believe it was on, I thought it was on the second floor, but now I'm starting to think it was on the first floor. Um, And it was roaming the halls. Oh. Cool. Hey, thank you for following our channel. Um, cool Yeezys is now following. Thank you very much uh, for the follow. Um, we're we're gonna be back. Our break is almost done here, guys, and then we'll be we'll get right back into it. Um, I'm just, what I'm doing right now is I'm actually looking for the floor that they're trying to go back and check on real fast. And again, we are running the, um, the Mad Mage module. So right now I'm just looking, I'm looking for it. Uh, do, 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 Cause you're trying to find Hall of Mirrors. That was, that was a, that was a fun one. <laughs> uh, especially for that one, yeah. Um, Question: When it says that they're following you, is there a way to change that from a dinosaur, or is it just stuck being a dinosaur? Oh, did it come up as a dinosaur? Yeah. Uh, no, I think I can't change it right now. Um, I think it's 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 uh, I think the only way I can do it is either I pay for it or I find it or um. I got to be affiliate level, and I'm not quite to the affiliate level. Yeah. So we're, that's what we're trying to. That's what we're. I've been working on and trying to get up to is there. So, uh, still checking here, guys. I'm sorry. Um, do 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 do. Yeah. Well, you guys, I I want to say it was on the second floor because that's where you guys you guys were digging, trying to dig. And this this is when Ebrick was still with us, and you guys picked up pickaxes and oh, was trying to dig. That. Yeah, you guys were trying to dig, and same with uh, Roland was also with you guys. Your monk was yeah. with you guys too, and a uh, a walking almost like suit of armor was coming down the hallway, and I believe Mal spotted like Mal spotted it, <laughs> and you guys decided not to fight it and ran. And 
and there was a symbol on that suit of armor that matches oh excuse me that matches the insignia that i believe mal or somebody picked up like i think it was a ring or something um but I believe it was over here on the first floor because that looks right. I'm just not finding it in here. And that's what I'm trying to find. Um, because it's one of the floors you guys are wanting to go to. I mean, I guess I guess I could just we could just pick a floor, say it's there, and I'll just magically do it. Like, you know, that's cool. Um But I know, I know it's somewhere here. Um, that's air elemental. I think it was like a shield golem. Is what it was. Mm -hmm. There's the gelatinous cube over on twenty six C, which wasn't too far off where you guys Is that were. On level two? That's on level two, yeah. <clears throat> But no, that's on level one. I'm looking at level one right now. Um, Omladen, Shattered Statue. And I'm just, I'm looking for anything that's lit up that should be, I swear it, I swear it was the first floor. Now that, now that I'm looking back at it, just because of the map layout. Because there, because you guys skipped this, there was an eight foot tall statue of a four armed uh, fish monster uh, that you guys like said nope and and left. <laughs> Yeah, you, you guys noped and just left on that one for sure. Um, now I'm gonna have to go to the second floor because now I'm not I'm not finding twenty five A. I think I see I kind of I went around twenty five. I thought it was around twenty five. Looking on, I'm also looking at the map too, where 25 is. Yeah, there's 25. I don't. Cause I know there's a gelatinous cube over there on 26C. Okay. 25A, uh, dead goblin, tools and pickaxes, and a headless statue. Um, clean. Empty. Twenty six D had a mirror. That's weird. I I don't. I I could have sworn it was here, but I am not. I am not finding it, guys. Um. Huh? Is on level one. Yeah, just search it. Yeah, just search. It. Oh, you you searched you searched it and found it. I don't. I didn't find it. It just. Shows that. Okay. Well, I am not 100% sure we're at level one, but if you guys want to, we can uh, we can flip over to level one um, and you can you can search for it. And we'll just do it that way. We'll just do it that way. Okay. So we're coming, we're coming back off of a uh, break. Um, again, I left the mic on so everybody uh, at home can hear us or in chat can hear us. And again, thank you for hitting that follow button. Um, and everything for us we 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 definitely as a group appreciates that um okay so you guys are going to go to the first floor now there there's an easy way to get to the first floor and there's a long way to go into the first floor easy way is you can go back to the on portal and just hop down the down the well and uh that takes you right there to the first floor and then from there, you can do your searching on the first floor if you like. Um, otherwise, you can still take the carpet, go to the third floor, and then fly back up two floors. 
actually you couldn't even fly up the two floors you'd have to walk it so you want to go to yawning portal all right let me let me go ahead flip back to the map here for you Blink. okay we got the we got the screen uh we'll leave it on this screen for now and then we'll put it back to the sixth floor once you guys get done with this real fast um okay so what i want from you guys i'm just gonna fast forward us you guys went to the onion portal uh you kind of said hey what's up and then just went straight straight down um typically he charges you guys like a gold to do it or whatnot but for you guys it's just like it you guys you guys just don't it, it the, the, the hole in the Yanni portal is so good, so big that when once you guys walked in, you could just bloop your carpet right above it, hop on, and just use it to lower yourself down. <laughs> so, I mean, it it's okay. So what I need is for the person that is searching for this golem, I need you to give me a... Um, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, no, that's that's what I'm saying. You're you're gonna have to give me a, a, a I want to say a, a perception check is what I want to say for you to be able to find this thing because yeah, it is it's it's supposed to be wandering around um, on this floor, but I could have sworn it was it was in a certain. It said you're not exhausted. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he just unchecked it and it popped up and said he was no longer exhausted, which I, I thought was no funny. Oh, there it is. Yeah, right here. Shield Goblin. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is a Shield Goblin. I was right. Level one. I found it. Okay. Oh, hey, what's up, Mr. Blue Bunny? Thank you for lurking. Appreciate you guys. Um, okay, so I want you to roll me. We're going to do, because um, it's not really survival, because you're not really out in the wilderness, and I don't think you're going to be able to find footsteps or anything on the stone floor of the first floor because the first floor is mostly stone anyways. Um, let's just go ahead. We're going to say we're just going to do we're going to do a perception check because you're keeping your eye out and you're trying to find it. Now, for the most part, you guys are going to have to run, run uh, or walk around. Now, my other question is to you because I gave you guys maps before. This is the map I'm showing you right here. Um, do you want to search up or low or down? You guys are right here. That's why I'm asking, do you want to go up or do you want to go down? Because you're like right in the middle of the map. Because there's nothing, like if you go up, there's nothing that ties you back down. You literally have to go back down the way you came. And if you go down, you can go down this way. And it will lead you, like, there's the, the floor, second floor is right here. It will lead you uh, back down here as well. Search below. Do you want to check out below? Okay. Uh, do what? Um, I was just going to do a roll to see if she even finds it, and then, and then decide from there if you guys want to keep searching or just say, we'll check back again later type of thing, okay? Because this is going to determine whether or not you find it. Okay. Give me a perception roll. You're not trusting digital dice? No, yeah, I wouldn't trust digital dice either. And if that's a one, I'd laugh. <laughs> okay. So one of her special features is lucky. If she has a bad roll, she can use lucky and re-roll, but must take the new roll instead. What did you get on that die? A five. Better than one. Yeah, you can you can use lucky. What if I never She's doing like a perception check as you guys are walking around seeing if she can find that uh golem. Um Sure, I'll say as long as somebody else is keeping an eye out, she can have advantage. Okay. His hand is going to be on your shoulder, helping you. Yeah, she like she like grips the wand like. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
14? Okay. Okay. As you guys continue on through this, uh, through the lower half of the first first floor of this dungeon, um, you come to the opening that you remember getting a crown at from a statue. Um, I believe Bart had it for a while. It was a, a, a crown that shot... Um, Yeah, it shot fire. It was like uh, Scorching Rays. Mm -hmm. I think it shot Scorching Rays. You were able to cast Scorching Rays. Um, you you guys were about to give up after searching quite a bit and using most oh, half half a day. Because, yeah, it, it's going to take you a good portion of this day to do this. Um, you find it. Okay. I, I rolled a percentile to see if you're going to find it. I gave you, uh, I was going to give you a 20%. And I rolled 83, so you you got it. So, um, it is fairly loud. Uh, it is a shield golem. Now you, when you um, when you see it in the opening and everything else, it does spot you. And when it spots you, you see it like doing like something like this. Uh, it, it's giving gestures like it's trying to cast a spell. And occasionally you see its head. Kind of do that little like robot, like a uh, like a, a twitch, you know, a little twitch in its head, and then it shifts and then tries tries to do something else. It, it appears to be trying to cast a spell to you, but it's not quite working. Or what do you want to do? Uh, I say, well, we, I found it. Okay. Thanks to your hard work, Jess. We managed to win some of them. Yes. I found it. What do we do? Because it looks like it's trying to cast a spell and it's not working. Okay, what's your next move? What's the whole idea of doing this? We had something that matched the control bar and shit. What was that? I don't know. We what just find out. Okay. Okay. Um. Basically, she tells you she's looking. Uh, she wants you to look for a uh, an amulet. Show it to it. How to do the spell, or it will think we're good people. Yeah, it, it's a it's a, it's an amulet um, that matches. The, there's a there's a rune on the back of its head uh, that that amulet matches as well. Okay. Um, so you reach into your bag of holding, and seeing that emblem or that uh, that, that rune on the back, you mat you picture it in your head, and you pull out this uh, am amulet out of the bag of holding. And sure enough, there it is. I grab it. Is the thing still looking at me? Uh, right now, yeah, it's it's still trying to <clears throat> cast. Okay, so I show it the emblem. Okay, so you show it, but um, it does it doesn't really respond. Um, you get closer, and it kind of dawns that you need to kind of concentrate on the room uh, of this amulet. So you got to put it in your hand and kind of concentrate and think hard what you want this to do. It it really can't speak. Yeah, it doesn't really speak, and it's not really giving you any communication back. Mm -hmm. The amulet itself is more to give it commands. It's you concentrating on this and giving a command using this amulet to get it to do something. I say. Commanding it, saying, Show me where you're. 
Okay, so you say, show me what you're protecting, and you're using it using the amulet. It still gives a little head uh, torque, you know, uh, like it's not quite right. And even though it's, it looked like it was trying to cast a spell, its hand with one finger out closes and points to you. Now that you have used the amulet to command or to give it an order, it now points to you. So, what do you want to do? Okay. It still stands there. It turns and begins to fall again. It's not my <laughs> So, question is, what are you going to do with this? Because... It is too heavy and too big to get it on that damn carpet. And it ain't going to work on the broom either. <laughs> this is the DM saying it's not going to be able to be lifted up with a flying object right now. Now, you can cast fly on it if you have fly. Sure, maybe that'll work, but no. I think I the think best part it would be cast levitate and just pull it. <laughs> <laughs> That is the DM. I shouldn't be giving you guys hints on this. You guys can come up with your own creative ways. Uh, so anyways. Uh, so what what are you going to do with this? Well, it doesn't seem like it's harming. Why? It's Leave it up and walk. Yeah, but they can go through the portal. Pick it up, and if not, he can stop them from attacking. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's through. I can't use spikes to get this. Oh my god, I think it'll break that fucking speed. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, it's a my robot doll, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Mr. Roboto. Mr. Roboto. Oh my god. Okay. Nickname is Doc Ock. Oh. Wow. All right. All right. It's a turtle. It's a turtle. It's a turtle. Uh. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> the red moves. I also want to know what was behind it. What do you mean behind it? Why? It was, was it over? I don't know. Don't know what like, got when I first saw it, was it in that hallway? It was, it was in a hallway, yeah, at first. It roams around. So it could have been in. It could have been anywhere. Now, this is considered a large construct. Okay? This is a large construct. That's why I was saying it is not going to fit on anything. Um, oh, my God. Okay, how big are the portals? Cause... Like, they were doorways, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they were going to dance in front of but how tall was it? Taller than me. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, well, Amiri went through it. Amiri's what's it? Yeah, he's four inches taller than me. Well, you went through it. How tall was this thing? Taller than me. 
Throw him the duck. <laughs> <laughs> all right so the, the plan is to try to get this thing to go through portals That's what yes so, so all right find a portal and see how far it is well there's a portal on this one but i don't think it goes anywhere in the region well there was that uh rust shop there there there's you know there's portals on the first floor that takes down let's go find them cool i think we went Oh, that and now it's steak. And then steak is now disintegrating. Oh. It's all in my water. Um, oh, black. Real quick, I'm 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 scrolling down to this real fast. Sorry guys, we will have we will have um we will have something up here on the screen here in just a minute. Uh hello, cool Yuzis. Hi. Um, how are you doing? Um, okay, so we are, let's see here, uh, there is a portal that's not too far from you guys. I'm looking to see what floor it takes you to, and if you guys were even able to use it beforehand. Um, you were not able to use this portal, and most likely you're not going to be able to still. You don't make, uh, make the qualification. Uh, this, this portal, just let letting you know, uh... I'm I'm just seeing what it what it did that you had to do. To do. Uh, what you... Okay, so worked into this uh, uh, into the mirror stone frame. This one was a mirror versus just being an arch. Uh, was an image of a human uh, wielding a wand. I believe you guys did open it. But you were unable to go through it. You didn't meet the qualifications that allowed you to go through it. But there, there was that one. Um, I will tell you what I've done borrowing. There is another one that actually Bernice had just gone through, I believe, on this floor. She came back through it. I want to say it was this floor, but I'm just double checking. Actually, it might have been the second floor now that I think about it. Uh, my, yeah, I think it's. Yeah, this one. Yeah, because you finally yeah. met the yeah. qualifications to go through it. Um, but I believe you guys on this floor have found all the portals that lead you elsewhere, um, whether you can go through them or not. I'm just double checking here. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um. Yeah. Really like that Hall of Mirrors. That was fun. Um, okay, so you, you kind of know you know, know about a portal on the second floor. So we, you guys can go to the second floor if you like to. Then instead of trying to do this, you can you move down to the second floor. And we can go to that portal. Uh, if you know exactly where it is, that makes it easier. Um, I'm pretty sure I know where it is on the second floor you're you're thinking of. And I only see honestly honestly I only see that one portal on the first floor. Yeah. 
uh, scrolling through this, that's all I see. So you go to the second floor. Okay, uh, go to the second floor. Now, the portal I think you're referring to or you're thinking of was actually close to the uh, skull um, uh, harp, or not harp, um, organ that was on the, uh, the second floor. Uh, there was a hidden room just off the main hallway that Bernice had stepped, uh, she had come out of that, uh, that secret area. Um, double checking. Yes, it's right here. It'd be number five on the, uh, on the, on the map. So that was right over here. Um, and again, I'm telling you guys this information because you've already been through this. Uh, so yeah, so, um, this is the one where you put a coin into it. Uh, this one takes you, takes you to the fourth floor. Let's, let's take this one. Yeah, let's take this See if it all, see if it How tall is this thing here? It's a large construct. What other thing? The arch? Uh, we took this thing down on the floor. Yeah, sure. Sure. I'll say you can go through it. Why not? Screw it. Uh, it goes, you, you, you get it to go through the portal after pumping in one coin. Who is, who is, uh, feeding this, this, uh, arch, uh, one gold coin? Say Bertram, you still have Uncle Sam? Well, we already conceded royalty. Oh. <laughs> Don't give me shit about that, I see. <laughs> I wish you guys never found out. Well, you should have never opened the door. Maybe you should have been part. Okay, so well, you, take, you take the portal. That takes you back to the fourth floor. The fourth floor, again, uh, just a reminder. Uh, that was the one that was mostly a uh, dirt floor and the water uh, had a bunch of mushrooms that, that grew up to almost a ceiling height. That is the same floor that you guys have defeated the Abolith or Abolith. Abolith. In. And the same floor you found your uh, new companion, uh, Peter on. Yes. And you also fought the drow. Um, on the fourth floor. I think there might have been another portal. Um, um, I'm trying to I'm trying to see. Let me let me see where it kind of opens up again. Um, okay, so when you guys walk out of this portal, you're back at that drow camp that you destroyed. Is where this portal is. Yeah, that's that's where that's where it pops you out at. Uh, so you see six pallets that lie on uh, spread out on the room, uh, and everything. Uh, also, I just need to know <laughs> uh, who who passed through the, who went through the portal first. Matt. <laughs> yes. Who, who went through the portal first? You you went through this time first. Okay. All right. Okay. So <laughs> you're going through it first. Okay. Um, you gain an emblem of uh, ingress ingress on your uh, on your uh, self uh, on your on your hand. Okay. It lights up blue. So. When you hit with an attack,
when you hit with an attack, a melee, I'm going to say, well, it doesn't really say, it just says when you hit with an attack, you can turn that attack into a crit. But once you use it, it goes away. Okay? So that is, that is put on you for now. All right? That's just melee attack. It just says an attack. So I think any attack you do. Oh, so like spell attack? Just says when you attack. I mean... I'm reading it here. said melee, but it says when the target hits with an attack, you have to hit. Right. You can turn that hit into a crit, which after which the boon goes away. So it's a one-time use. Okay. It does not expire nothing. It just says when you attack. So anyways, uh, okay. So fourth floor, you guys know that you can take the waterway and head down to the fifth floor. Still going to try to sleep. Well, we Boats, you didn't have the carpet. Oh, you, you can walk swim. in the water. <laughs> you can swim, but you won't. Uh, what level are you guys? Nine. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to. Okay. No. Um. There is one other portal on this floor that takes you down further. That is the in over there by the the, the drider layer. Um, that was just north of you guys, ab above the camp. There was that other one. You know, where you fought the drider and then I think there were some giant spiders too that was in there as well. Um, there was another uh, portal up there that also had that trap, uh, that trip wire. I think when you tripped it, it was something like the um, ceiling collapsed a little bit or something. I forget, but either way, there, there was that up there. So you guys can take that. Okay, so you go back up there. Um... And you find it, uh, basically, what you find is the arch. And I'm just going to kind of read this. Uh, carved into the arch, remember if you remember this, carved into the arch are six stone notches. Each one contains a small stone figure that weighs one pound. The figure figurines represent a black dragon, a unicorn, oh, a yeah. umber hulk, a, uh, an owlbear, a minotaur, and a manticore. Carved into the wall inside the arch is a stylized image of a mountain with a full moon symbol above it. Close inspection of the moon reveals a half-notch diameter hole in the middle of it. Speak up. I take the unicorn and take its horn and put it in the hole. So you remember what you did last time. Correct. So you take it and put it in there. And when you do, the portal... <laughs> Opens up. Who's going first? You're going to go first this time? Okay. Let me reshuffle this. Okay. And let me roll this. Okay. You go through it. Once within the next 24 hours, you can use a reaction to reduce the damage it takes. From one source by 10d6. 24 hours. 24 hours. Alright. Huh? Once. 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 Within that 24 hours, you can do that. And I'm going to leave that one up. You just got to remember your crit thing. Yeah. Right. I mean, I could probably find it here. That way I just have it. Okay. Well, I found it. Here and I found because I, I got I got these printed off too. So okay, cool. I got both of those out. So you guys take that portal. Uh would you go ahead and bring up uh floor six for me? The sixth floor, because that is actually where you guys left off, and that is where this portal takes you. This portal takes you back to the sixth floor. It shouldn't because we should be able to go through. No, oh, so open. six to four two. Do what? 
I, I didn't hear you. What what'd you say? I'm just noting that we can twirl around 246. Yes. Without going to five. The important part. Yeah. And that's why I go back to the staff that I put out here for Mr. Bowser. Since, uh, Okay, I am looking real quick to see if you guys have even been in this room where the portal is. No. So go ahead if you could. Yeah, we're going to flip over to the map. Okay, guys, so chat with you being on here uh sorry and appreciate it uh, appreciate your patience here again like i said this is our this is our first first time doing this live um so what we have on here is we have um uh basically turned on light sources and everything else so oops Uh, okay, so everybody's on the board. Is that what I'm seeing? Board, you need to put a swirl too. Yep, that's what I'm getting ready to do. Uh, let me group you guys all. Ugh, no, group. There we go. Let me group all your icons together here. No, stop doing that. Keeps wanting to bring up token settings. Okay, there. No, no, I don't want the torches with me, too. Leave the torches. <laughs> we have our own torch. There we go. Okay, so it actually warped you guys. Jeez. It's... Where's that number now? I lost the number. Here it is. Okay. Right over here. So you guys have not been here at all in this area. This is a new area that you're at. And I'm trying to I'm trying to read this carefully here because I hate to just throw you somewhere you haven't been. Um, I do not have a token yet for the Shield Guardian. Because I was not expecting that to happen. So I will have to uh, do something later. Now we just gotta take more than uh, here. No. I would have taken a cat with me and it would have died. Or it could teleport. So, yes. As you guys come out, uh, you are now in this uh, short little hallway right here. Um, and the portal closes behind you stepping out of it of course is you all plus the shield guardian which uh you may have to bring that up on a different um window uh so you can see the stats but you guys are now here back on the sixth floor where you left but that is player's knowledge you guys know you're on the sixth floor character wise you haven't been here this spot so you're still going to need to put two to two together that you're back on the sixth floor. So, where do you want to begin this? As you can move your icons, you you can move your icons around. Um, just make sure if there's a door, you don't go through it until you tell me that you went through it, like like we've discussed before. You should just be able to click on your character. And move it. Now, don't forget, you also have control over the light source. Yeah. Okay. Wait, 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 okay. Okay. So, my ass, my ass around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's a door right there. So you guys are going to go through the door. Is uh, Do we have uh, Bertram and Bart doing the same? Or are they uh, going elsewhere? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to which one? <laughs> <laughs> yes, to which one? You're going with them or? Yeah, okay. Did you move both of them already? Okay, yeah. there it goes. Okay, then I'm going to grab all of you guys again. 
And oh no, that's just all the grub ones. That is it. Okay. What? This thing is awesome. I want you to try it on the chair. There it goes. Does it work? All right, you guys gonna go through the door? Oh yeah, you betcha. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Move you through the door, and you're in here. Um, I'm just gonna right now. I'm just gonna sit center, center, center you. <laughs> Synergy. <laughs> Uh, in the middle of this real quick. So I'm that way I can quickly flip over here. Um, what happened? Did you already? <laughs> you, you did that, didn't you? My God. All right. So <laughs> see, this, this is what, this is, this is a nice thing. I having somebody else that, uh, can help me out when I'm trying to, trying That's to do exactly stuff. What it looks like Did you give her permission then on it? Oh, okay. Am I going to need to do that? Um, I can, I didn't, I can do another. Okay. Um, yeah, just, just assign it to her and then I'll, I can go in there and, uh, set some stuff up, uh, for her as well. Okay. So you guys are in here. As you walk into this room, as you walk into this room, make sure I'm reading the right thing, you see stone couches and tray holders uh, accompany the northeast and southwest corners. Lying on the dusty floor beneath one of the couches is, a, is an iron key. You guys, I want to say you see it just because it kind of glistens a little bit. Uh, now, what it opens up, you're not sure. But I'm giving you the key. Anyways, I'm just giving it to you because you have a bright kind of a light from that and it reflects off. That's an easy search, but that's what you find in this room. It's a lounge. It's, it's, be a living room. it's literally called Dwarven Den. <laughs> it's a lounge. It's very still a lounge, yeah. That's where you already have damage. Oh, remember he's had his health yeah. permanently uh, reduced. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Never got that fixed. Either, yeah, you could have done. That. No, not yet. <laughs> How long have I think? Well, you probably know your sister could probably do something. <laughs> okay, so. No. It's so you got three other doors that are attached to this room, north, east, and west. You already came through the south door. Which direction are you guys wanting to go? You want to go east? Sure. I mean, it. that's what Bernice is saying. Is everybody? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so Bernice walks over to this door and says, Let's go through this door. Yeah. All right, that door right there. Okay. Oop. Nope. Come on, you grab, grab. <laughs> there it goes. There's no real good way for me to move everybody into this next area, so I'm probably going to be taking individuals here just real quick. Sorry. Um. Over here. Yeah, it, it's it is fairly just from destination skinny real quick. And unfortunately every time I'm dragging people it keeps pulling up token settings and I don't want token settings. I'm trying to move people. From the tombs that one. I lasted for yeah, it's gone. Oh, I just stacked somebody on top of each other. There we go. Okay. Um, again, you end up in this hallway. I just moved you guys kind of just over here real fast. Um, there was no way for me to group you up the way you were and move you over here. So. So, anyways, you guys are you guys are here, uh, in this hallway. Um, now. You can see on this map, easily enough, that it's going to take you right back to the temple area. So now you realize, I mean, 
real quick, you just want to, if you just, we'll just wave it and say somebody, uh, cause I moved, uh, Peter for Quinn. Um, you go through, you check the door and realize, oh, it's a temple and then come back and tell everybody. So that way. Hey guys, that's yeah. the temple. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bart wants to go check it out. Okay. You want to go check out the temple? Yeah, well, yeah he wants to make sure I want to make sure that the great good. Clown students. Okay. Uh, then, uh, yeah, sure. Is everybody following? All right. If you're following, just go ahead and move. Everybody move their icon uh, past the door. And uh, is Bertram going? If Bertram's going, take him with you. Everybody who is going to end up in uh, the temple, go ahead and move. Um, All right, there we go. Okay, so we're back in the temple. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Uh, let's see here. I'm just checking. So you guys are going to go up to the uh, double door or the, the big double doors that you saw? Yeah. Was what you're saying? Yeah. Ones up the steps. Okay. All right, I want to go ahead and uh, back this up camera wise. Just so that way we get a nice big old overview here. Okay. When you approach, when you go up the stairs and you approach towards the double doors, the, they appear to be still shut. Nothing of the double doors appears to have been opened. There's no real good way of determining whether or not it's been opened recently. I mean, well, technically it has been opened recently by y'all, but whether it's been opened after you guys or not, that's another story. But uh, it doesn't appear to be opened or be disturbed. Okay. So... Where do you guys want to go from here? Yeah, you have you, east. you have the door up north and you got the door on the east. You want to go east instead? Okay. Are we going standard marking order or we're just yep. Scooby doing this? <laughs> um, well, I mean, if you guys want to group yourself right now while you're in the temple in the order that you want to march in, then I will try my best to orient stuff the way I can. Are you guys trying to go two by two? Yeah. Or are you really wanting this? Um... Yeah, if we can, we'll, we'll stay two by two. It's like a weird. Well, now we'll move her where she's supposed to be. So. Spikes in the end. <laughs> okay. I'll move you guys over to the next area. Blink. Okay. Now this is what you see. You're coming in this hallway. You see a hallway. Uh, Bertram 
You're up front. What? It's for my aura. Bertram's in the back. Bart's in the back. Ah, uh, yeah, the nice little. Uh... Oh, those are guardian. No, I, I, it doesn't matter. I'm moving that out of the way. Okay, so, so Bertram, no Bart, yeah. Bart. You can see that this hallway does turn up north. Uh, the other hallway you just passed as you're walking through also went north. Uh, the hallway that's uh, just to your right looks like yeah that way. Um, Looks like it goes uh, obviously south, but then uh, tees off. Um, you can see it on your screen though, right? I can see it on my screen. Yeah. Okay, so you see what you see. So who's leading and where are you guys well, going? Actually, Bernie should be able to see down there too. Dark vision. Yeah, I'm pretty sure anybody with dark vision can probably see further. Um, now that you mention it, now I got to flip over to the the oh, page. Okay. Yeah, you moved around this light though. Bertram is not outside. Oh, you see. All of the bow, you really can't see as far as we can. Yeah. Because you're like that. You can just see this, right? Yeah, it's essentially like that. Yeah. It's a little bit further south because he's where he's. Yeah. Yeah, dark vision changes the. Yeah, I see that. That's crazy. No, 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 south or north. That's cool. Okay, south. Here, here's the thing, though. As you're trying to decide that, you guys hear footsteps coming from just ahead around the corner and giggling. What? You hear... <laughs> okay. He didn't have his weapon out. So yeah. All right. That's right. It's like hiding behind the leaves, but I'm hiding behind the shade. You want to be fast as <laughs> okay. Are you going towards this giggling? The giggling is coming and from forward. Ahead of you, around the corner. It yeah, sounds like. I'm gonna go around, peek around the corner. Okay. All all of you guys going? That's what I. That's what I did. Peek up around. Okay. When you go and peek around the corner. You can just hear off, just off in the distance, again, footsteps. Sound like they're around the corner giggling. <laughs> Do they sound like they're coming towards me or going away? They're not coming towards you. Yeah. I've seen kill the ox. <laughs> Let's follow. Oh, my God. Follow it? Yeah. Sounds like a plan. But that sounds like <laughs> my plan. <laughs> okay, I'm moving this real quick. Okay, so all of you are following uh the step so if everybody would move uh pretty much their characters to the next corner i don't know if anybody can see my pings i saw the first one right here yeah move up there oh. since you're all going that direction <clears throat> as you get up to that direction again bertram bart more bart because you're up front bart yeah. sorry bart you hear again as you get to that corner, you it sounds like it just rounded the next corner and is, is giggling. Still giggling. <laughs> You're going to go ahead and go forward and around to the other corner? Okay. <laughs> As you get to that corner, it feels like you just missed it. <laughs> it sounds like it's coming from... Around the next corner, again, still giggling, still she laughing, her situation again. And, nope. and and you can still hear the footprint, uh, footsteps. Yeah. As everybody, I, I'm, I think at this point everybody is kind of like going with, but yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that somebody's paying attention, or it's invisible. Well, this is true. We have come across invisible creatures at this point in the in the. So yes, I am still calling them creatures because they're being polite. Just yeah, just move your guys' tokens up there, including uh Bertram if you wouldn't mind. Uh Wait. okay. So it seems it goes in this O shape. So it appears to be going in circles. Yeah. 
Are you going to continue following? Just spread. No, no, don't do that. Cut them off. If they're going around at a I'm going to stand right here and wait. Yeah, Murphy will stay where he is. Mark will come. Come running? Yep, down the hall. Yes. Okay. There you go. Right, you're going to have to round the corner for me here for anything to happen. But you hear that giggling yeah, coming from around is, the corner. Yeah, I know. I'm looking at where, where Bart is. And Bart can hear the footsteps and hear the giggling around the corner as he's approaching that corner. Okay. You, you're going to turn the corner? Yep. Okay. As you turn the corner, you hear the footsteps sound like they start fading away and then giggling. <laughs> And just fades. So I yell out to the party. <laughs> oh. Somebody's playing a trick on us. Well, I think we should go. And um, it was a male voice, by the way, that you heard the whole entire time. Yeah. Kind of giggling, laughing. Probably a mad one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys went around this loop. <laughs> I only got you guys to go around once, but that's fine. Uh, but you now kind of see that there is a door north and two looking uh, hallway areas that you can go to. I think we should switch this. The south yeah, goes and south. tees off. North is a door. <laughs> we got a door Who's going north. Hallway? Door. I'm going to come here and just look down here and see what Mark sees this way. See a room and then another hallway down here. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm just double checking something real quick where you're at. If you would be able to see this just for standing right there. No. You don't see that that's yeah you see that it opens up to another room and a, another hallway or so yeah which you can see on your map is what you, what you can tell them yeah so do you want to check out the door north or who's up there me and i check out that door all right all right I'm back. so whoever's checking the door um who, who's who's op trying to open it who's going to open it? you're opening it as you reach for the handle and you touch it and try to open it, it kind of swings open a little bit slowly like it wasn't shut all the way. And just... Uh, you can go ahead and move your uh, character into that room. Wh whoever's going in that room can move their character into that room. Um, I am just doing this for Bertram's sake, just so that way... You have to come in and tell him to see yourself. It's amazing. Yeah, Bertram can't see anything. It's too dark. So let me, let me, hold on. Let me just move the light source. I, I'm, I'm going to move it back here in just a sec. I moved it. Oh, the golf. There we go. The golf's still there. It's above your head. Can't see it. It's because of the light. We don't have light. Yeah. See? There. The light's back. All right. I just wanted to give the, uh, the outline for this room because Bertram didn't go in there and the light's not in there. So who went in there? You said Thorn yeah. and and Bernice are the only two that went in there. Okay. 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 What do you see? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the two of you. As you walk in, you see that there are um, seven alcoves in this room. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven. Four nurses. Very much. Yeah. Mouths out in the hall still? Yeah. 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 Uh, you see that they're empty alcoves that stand along the wall. A white marble bed stands in the middle of this room. Its corner post carved to resemble dwarf warriors standing at attention. At the foot of the bed is a stone trunk. It's lid thrown open. The legs of something dead 
seem to be sticking out of this chest. And a war pick that lies on the floor nearby. That's a royal if you're going. <laughs> to keep this room unsafe. Um, I'm going to slowly make my way over to the chest and peek in. Okay. To see what kind of creature it is that they're trying to eat with their war pick. So you're looking into the chest? Mm -hmm. See if it's human or what? Well, ever small feet. As you look into it, you see the grayish skin of a dugar, a female dugar. That apparently has been shot dead. And possibly stuffed in this chest. Do Is there anything else in this chest besides her? It looks like it's been pretty much pit clean. Uh, yeah, that's a big insult. So, sure. You, you bless her with your elven goddess of this. Of, of this. Yeah. <laughs> Not only is a not only is a non Dugar blessing this body, but a non Dugar of a that worships a dwarven goddess of a dwarf is blessing a Dugar body. So to add injury to insult, she basically blessed the body. Okay, cool. So proceed. What do you, uh, how do you guys want to do? Where do you want to go? Where? Flat flash where you're wanting to go. You're gonna move? Move move your person. You're moving it while they're in there? Oh, oh excuse me. Okay, so you're gonna move right there? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh yeah, you uh the light is Still just bright enough where Bertram can kind of see. Okay, you move over there. When you move there, while you guys are checking this room out, you move. Oh, God. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, if he goes in a hybrid mode or whatever, he can definitely see. Yeah. yeah. Okay, whatever. Either way. The door... I, I can't remember how to open these doors up to let the light shine in. Oh, um, anyways, so there's a little bit of light still kind of shining in from her orb, but it's starting to fade as she's starting to walk away. Of course, Mal walks away. So this room, devotees of uh, Doom, Doomathorn once walked these halls. Uh, to get from their quarters to the temple. Um, but unfortunately, they don't know more, right? <laughs> Making sure I'm reading the right one. Uh, the corpses of two Dugar, looks like one male and possibly a female, lay sprawled in the center of this room. You see a stone arch to the north, which is on your left, and another one, barely able to see it with the light, 
to the south, another stone arch. Say so what? I can't hear you. What? Okay. Well. No, no, that's completely fine. You. They chose their fate. Okay. No, this is perfectly fine, guys. Um. All right. Uh. Let me. Yeah, in 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 mal fashion, in mal fashion. Um. <laughs> okay. This this is this is gonna be interesting. Um okay. Sorry, I'm just reading real quick. Oh, two. Okay. Okay. Uh, 21 to hit, 23 to hit, 9 to hit, another 9 to hit. Who don't hit, but one hit. You, sweetie. Okay. Yes, you. Two of them. Two hits. Okay. As you feel hitting you from two different sources. I need you to take 12 points of damage from the first hit. Eight points from the other hit. As two slam, uh, pretty much slam attacks, two things just all of a sudden, boom! Slam into you as you approach the uh, archway to the north. Hmm, let me guess. It's because I'm not a dwarf. <laughs> hmm, let me guess. No, that's not it. Sorry. <laughs> um, we're going to have to roll for initiative. Since somebody has a hatred of I don't even hear it. What do you mean? From, from, from here, we are going to roll initiative. Made all time. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have everybody roll initiative because this is going to be like what's going on type of situation. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't find my, there it is, there, I forgot to bring my notebook out, there, I was like trying to figure out where my notes were, hey right here, I forgot to bring them out, I just started, where? <clears throat> now, I know there's a way I can put up initiative order and tracker here on the, on the screen, uh, for right now, Right now, we're not going to do that. I just kind of keep track with what's going on here. Um. <laughs> it's not a one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, which I probably should have more or less rolled with advantage, but I didn't. Um, yeah, the golem's going to have to roll. I'm just double-checking here, just in case. Any of those? Okay. Just making sure any of those four that I rolled wasn't a natural 20, since I should have rolled probably with advantage here. Now. 18. Okay. Um, who would be stupid ass golem? Oh, I bet it is. No, that's not what I'm looking at. 
try to determine whether or not I want you to have that many hit points or not. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the math. That's so your level 15 character with, with 42 eats to increase it. Okay. Oh, well. Yeah, that's, that's, that's average. 142. We'll do the average. Oh. So the boss is back oh. at me. Since you're in the room with it. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm just checking here or whatnot. That's what I wanted to know. Cool. So, I'm I'm. Uh, for those for those of you wondering, uh, there are probably not going to be any tokens on the board for these things, and I'll explain in a little bit. Either way, uh, let me let me take a look at the um, at the initiative rolls here. Actually, no, I'm gonna. Yeah. Okay. Anybody above twenty on the initiative roll? What'd you get? 23. Uh, what's your dex? Uh, three. Okay. Dude, I, he's been rolling high, even with this advantage shit. <laughs> oh, no, I have a plus six when I... Is your proficient? Well, because of plus three in dex. And then, because of what? Magic I chose. Um, I also get magical right. whip, which gives me. Okay. Um, fifteen to twenty. What'd you get? Mr. Rogan. <laughs> Did you beat eighteen? Okay. Let me let me get Mr. written here. And what'd you get? Uh, sixteen. Sixteen for Thorn. Okay. Uh, ten to fifteen. Okay, 13 for Bertram. So BF got 13. And Bertram, BB, got 10. Okay, I'm missing Bernice and Mal. <laughs> Mal? Both of you got five, but you're letting Mal go first. Okay, Mal, but you got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, no, but on your turn, you can try to figure out something that's going on. Or if somebody's ahead of you that knows what's going on, can shout something. Type of deal. Okay. So, they go first. Of course they do. Because they beat you in decks. <laughs> Rolled the same amount. So, they're going to go first. Um, so. Again, Mal. Again? Yeah, again. <laughs> You're standing right there. You're a parent watching the kid. Right? <laughs> You're a parent watching the kid stick <laughs> the fork in the light. I'm going to do it at work all the time. I don't want to do it at it. You were right there watching me be stupid. Is he watching? And you didn't Did care. Wow. Oh, okay, sorry. I am trying to see if this thing, if it's invented. With advantage or not? What are their coworkers? I called them this child. He called me one day and said, "Oh, I have Justin to call me." Hmm. And I emailed Justin and said, "Your child needs your help." Okay. Well, I'm not. No, it is with advantage. So they're attacking with advantage. You don't see any. <laughs> Except for her getting hit. Um, They're invisible. 17? For wait, one? Wait, one moment. Let me see something. <laughs> okay. My shield guard would like to take a reaction. Okay. And its reaction is 
it will shield me uh -huh. if I get a plus two on my AC. Okay. So now it's 18. <laughs> so is your shield out for you to be able to get up? Yes, it is. I forgot to do it. Okay. Well, we'll just say after those first two pumbles you got, you pulled your weapon out. You pulled yeah. your weapons out. Okay. Okay. You just see her all of a sudden, oh, what the hell? And she pulls out her shield and everything else and um, looks like she's trying to figure out what the hell's going on and she gets hit. So the first one doesn't hit you with a 17, correct? Since now you got plus two to AC. Well, it's, it's, uh, it says I have. Yes, I know. If you wield it, when you wield it, you get that the plus two to AC from the shield. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, instinct. You pull your sword, your scimitar, and you pull that out, mm -hmm. or you can pull your staff out. It can be wielded with two hands. Okay. Uh, forget what does blind sight do again? Yeah. Okay, that was one attack. Here's the second attack. Uh, natural 20. That's going to hit. Here's another attack. Uh, 19. And the last attack. Uh, 23. So three hits on you now. Okay, so one was a natural 20. Again, how we do a natural 20s is it automatically does max damage for the first set of dice. So I'm going to write that down real quick. Uh, so that three, three, four, seven, 19 points on a crit. So they did 19 points of damage on that one. Here comes the last two. Oh, that's max damage. I'm glad that wasn't for the crit, was it? Uh, that would be 12, 16 points on that one. And the last one is eight point, eight more points on top of that. As you get pelted by, uh, by all these hits. Okay. Uh, where, where are you at total wise? I forgot to mark this down. I'm now. 32. Uh, what's it, 85 plus 10 extra? So okay. That ends their turn, meaning there's more than one, and it goes to Peter. I, I'll allow it. You probably screamed after the first yep. hit before we went initiative. This time, with my sensitive hearing, can I hear it? I'm pretty sure with you guys, yeah, you could probably hear it. I, I think it could echo through. Sure. Someone's in. Someone needs help. Is. Okay. Uh, well. <laughs> with you. Yes. Now is the only defeat. Uh huh. Okay. And Bart is nowhere. Yep. Uh, go ahead and you. I mean, you can move. Yeah, I you will. Still can move. So. Move. Uh. I mean, right now it sucks because the only light source is Mal and Bertram's nowhere near on the map to be able to see anything. So. <laughs> Bertram can see, yeah. Uh, he he can kind of see like the light coming around. Yeah, the corner. my map shows that I can see. Bert Bertram can kind of see around the the light, like right here. Yeah. You Bertram can see the light around this corner, but it's not lighting up the hallway. Is, is what I'm going to say. So he can find his way. Yeah, but that's Bart. That's Bart's vision. Then one on that screen is Bertram. So, anyways. Did you move your token? Uh, no, I wanted to read stuff first. Okay. Okay, let's move this back. All right, so I'm going to use my action before I move to uh, go into hybrid mode because I don't think I did that beforehand. No, you definitely didn't do it beforehand. All right, going to go into hybrid mode. Back out into the hallway. Start heading the direction that I heard the scream. Okay. Um. Let's see, I'm like to move fifteen. Fifteen. 
So I got the fifteen one. Yeah, because I think you were right. I think you were right here. Yeah. So you, and then you moved here, so that's fifteen. So that's twenty there, and then ten there. So that gives you that gives you a total of thirty. So, and you use an action yep. to get to there. So, uh, and that's it. Yep. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rubato. Now, here's the thing, and I'm going to ask this. Um, Mr. Rubato has blind sight. Yes, he does. Can you take this whole These things are invisible. And dark vision. Would blind sight allow them to see invisibility of people? Only true sight. Only true sight. That's what I thought. I just had to, I just had to run that by. Uh, no, he has dark vision and blind sight, and that's it. So he can attack, but it will be at disadvantage on whatever he uh, swings towards. Granted, uh, his this is his like um, initiative. Like, he doesn't know. Like he saw you get hurt, so he reacted to give you a shield. And now he's trying to find whatever's trying to hit you. So he's now swinging wildly, trying to swing at whatever's hitting you. So it'd be at disadvantage for attack roll to attack. Yep, two attacks. First one, and it's all disadvantage. So you'll roll and take the lower, the lower one. <laughs> Five, but he adds plus, plus seven. seven. Twelve. Twelve. The other one would have been twenty-two. First fist, boom! Slams and hits hits the ground right right next to you, but doesn't make anything. Second swing. Okay. A one. A one. <laughs> Fifteen. Oh. I need Mr. Rubato to roll me a percentile dice. A eighty one. Oh. Eighty one. another room. This is not my fault. Eighty one. Um. I get some cat taste on you. This this. As its fist, as its fist hits uh, its other fist. Hey, hey, hey. As its other fist comes down and slams onto the ground, you hear it all of a sudden do, um, uh, like it almost sounds like a mechanical failure as when it lifts up its arm, its arm itself seems like some bolts might have gotten loose and now it's, it now has a minus two damage for the next three rounds. Starting on the next round because this is all of its attacks it can do already. So it's, so it's minus two on, it's just minus two on damage. It's not on to attack. It's just on damage. So it won't do as much damage on its hit. But that, that ends its turn, right? Yeah, that ends its turn. Okay. Thorin. Yes. You're up next, buddy. All right. So he told me that there's danger. So I'm going to go. That's, that's what he said. R5. And twenty five just puts me outside the door. There you go. Ready, dodge. <laughs> you suck. Oh, actually, I'm gonna. Step uh, away you just dodge. put yourself right on top of uh, Bertram. I did. Yeah, I'm gonna move you over. You no, you were on top. <laughs> you you were definitely on top. All right, I'm gonna actually use my action to dash. Instead of dodging, you're going to take the dash action. Okay. So right there gets you 10. 
15, 25. Yep. Okay. And that's it for you? Okay. Uh, Bia. Bart uh, is going to cast a shield of faith on Mal. Okay. How long does that shield that you have last on you? Yeah, I know, but how long does it say it lasts? The guardian grants a plus two bonus to the nurse AP, but the guardian is within fifty five feet of the nurse. And I would say one of the feet of it. Yeah, it doesn't say it drops. It just says she gets a plus two yeah. as a reaction. So uh, as long as she's within five feet of that, she's that gonna get plus two. Garden. So, sure, yeah. <laughs> Twenty. <laughs> I, I, I will. I will allow this as a magical, as a magic. Okay, so what's it, what's this doing? Is you got the shield guardian kind of putting his shield, kind of around you, trying to cover some of the blockage while this other fist is sitting here slamming on the ground trying to find this thing that's hitting you, and then all of a sudden you start glowing. Uh, with a dim blue light as you feel the presence of a magical aura go over you and you're granted another 2 AC. So, I will allow it because that's how I'm describing it and I think that works just fine. So, that was, my bonus action. That was your bonus action. My action will be I'm going to just fire up two random other blasts <laughs> in general direction. Okay. Uh, so this, disadvantage. disadvantage on those shots. That was just regular. Oh, because he didn't. So go back there. He didn't right click and say disadvantage. I did. Yeah. So do you got to do the hot key since we're using the beyond twenty? Well, I'm gonna roll the second one here. And... No, that's it's fine. You can roll it twice, and we'll take the lower one too if it works. Oh, there it is. So it's an eight. An eight total yeah. will miss on your first blast as it just boom and just strikes the wall. So. What's the hot key for that? I don't know. I haven't messed with that ever. I just usually roll twice like what you just did and it take the lower. Says, uh, control left. Control left arrow? Yeah. Yeah. It's your left control. Or Not maybe it's control left click. Oh, hang on. That's fine. So 12 on the first one, but with disadvantage, your second one is 18. So we're going with the 12 total. And again, that one strikes the wall again as it misses. Uh, okay, well, then that's going to be my action bonus action. Okay, well... Don't go anywhere because now it's BB's turn. Her turn hearing the commotion. Yep. And just saw two companions run by him because I will say that if they run within five feet, you definitely see them. Plus, they're in front of him within the light, so he definitely can kind of see their shadow or their silhouette. But... Um, I'm pretty sure I've got enough movement to get. I don't know. What, what's this movement? Uh, 30. I'm going to use my bonus action dash. Okay, so hearing, hearing Mal. So fifteen can definitely get you right here. I want to try to get next to the shield guardian. Self of the shield guardian. Okay, the only uh, remember the only thing we can't do is we can't jump corners. Yep. So that's what I'm looking at. Like if you go this direction, that's going to jump a corner. Right here is where you're going to have to stop for fifteen. Yep. Uh, ten would get you here, which is twenty five, and you said you're dashing. Yep. Uh, so 25, 15 on top of that is 40, mm -hmm. correct? 40 for there. And then you got 60 feet of movement? 60 feet from dash. Yeah, 60, okay, yes, yes, for sure. 60 feet of movement, 
will get you right next to him. I already moved you. Okay. Because that's like 50, I think is what I calculated. Well, I wanted to be south of it. Oh, just, yeah, that, yeah, right below it? Yeah. Okay. I, I moved him, but you let me know if that's not where you want. Now, you guys can kind of see more of the board here. Uh, the way we got it set up is that this map um, is is looking at Bertram. So. so now I'm within five feet of Mal. Yes, you're within five feet of Mal. I'll switch bait. I'm going to use bait and switch. <laughs> <laughs> if he chooses to, he maybe. maybe. What did I have to do? He could. He could I also. Could he could also I'm take. Uh, so I am going to take it. The, uh, I'm going to bait and switch with her. So I'm going to move her back if she's willing. Are you willing to move? Swap. I'm still next. To yeah, you're still within five feet of your guardian. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to add six to my AC. Okay, you're adding six to your AC. Six? Yeah, because I can roll, I can use a all oh, superiority yeah. dice for it. Yep. And then I'm going to make two just random swipes in the air. Okay, so bait and switch is something you can do as long as you have movement, correct? Yeah. Oh, did I use all my movement? Or did I have um, that's what I'm going to check real yeah, quick. Because uh, you started it. here, and I said you can go here to 15. <laughs> that was 20, which is 25. Uh, 35, 40 to there. 50. No, 60 gets you just right below the... Okay. So you wouldn't be able to bait and switch because you would have no movement left. Sideways, then go back up. Then... Depends on. Uh, it's like it's like... Yeah, it's like I'll, I'll use my action. Okay. To... <laughs> and bait and switch. So you're gonna you're gonna use the action to take another dash yeah. so you can just, get another thirty feet of movement to just so, can, switch. just so I can switch with her. Okay. In that case, then you would you can swap. Um, I'll swap you. Okay, sure. Um, let's swap you two around <laughs> here. And that would use up your attack. Yep. Because now you don't have an action because that uses yep. your action and bonus action and movement speed. Just do that. He basically comes. Oh, man. This is what you guys see. He comes running down the hallway, taking turns. And he sees Mal, who looks pretty, like, beat up right now. He just grabs her from behind. And goes, do you trust me? <laughs> and of course she's like, I guess. And he goes, <laughs> he just grabs her and throws her behind. And then he, uh, and then he moves into her spot, just like with his, and now with his weapons drawn, like, okay, what the fuck, ready to go. But you, no. you gotta no. wait. No. <laughs> what do you mean? No, you don't. Fuck yeah. You can. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you could, yeah, you could definitely action surge if you wanted to, uh, but you're not going to. No. Okay. Mal, you just got pulled behind your gallum. What are you doing? Because now it's your turn. It's my turn. It is your turn, girl. What are you doing? It's his turn. Who? He just had his. Yeah. Before uh, Bart and Bertram. Yeah, he moved. I was. Confused. I'm a very slow person. He moved twice. Yeah, and I still can't see him. Technically, you forgot you had a boon that allowed you within the next 24 hours once to reduce uh, damage coming in by 10 D6s, which you did not use, but now I mentioned it, you might want to remember that. Since we've already moved on, and uh, it's it's your turn. <laughs> do you know what you want to do? Yeah, I don't think you should fireball in this room, if that's what you're thinking. That is true. I can't, I, mean, I can't deny that. that I can't hide with birds on yet. 
<laughs> um, so what's what's Mal gonna do? Uh, uh, see an enemy? <laughs> All right. Well, so what's I Mal doing? My scimitar. Okay. I can You're just going to swing in the air just randomly? Don't hit me. Those two behind me, and they basically just start swinging. Okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah. So, so, so you put your back against the shield golem, yep. and you swipe wildly be be behind. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Hey, it's not a five and it's not a one. <laughs> Fourteen. Woo! <laughs> You hit nothing. Serious. I was so excited about that. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, I know. I, I can I can feel it, but you hit nothing. What you doing? How tall is this room? How tall is this room? Uh, let's just say it doesn't say, so I'm going to just say, um, I think I said the average was 20 foot. So we're going to say 20 feet. And how tall is the golem? The golem is a large creature, so it's above 10 feet. Like it's not too far from the ceiling. You kind of already took your action to swipe. So I want to say no. I know you got movement. You can move if you want to move. What you want to do? Well, well, I I need to know what you're doing. What what you what you doing? She does have a bonus action to heal herself. That is true. Yeah, go to the highest. She always forgets that she can heal. <laughs> That's why we said the healer is yeah. behind the paladin. So, <laughs> so what, what's I'm going to heal myself for third level. Third level healing word? Okay. How does healing word sound? Or how does it look when you cast it? I say Bernice, help. <laughs> 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 Bernice, I need help! And then all of a sudden she starts glowing with this magical orb. Okay, so that is D4s, 3D4s, yes. plus your wisdom modifier. Plus four. So 3D4s plus 4. Roll them and you heal up for that amount. Uh, while you're healing, because are you moving? No, you're just going to stay there? Okay, you can speak up too, please. Because I can barely hear you when you say that. So. Bernice. Yes, it I'm is gonna move as turn. quite as far as I can in my turn. Which okay. is fifty feet. F fifty yeah. feet. Okay. Uh, I'm back in the room. Yep. You, you can get. Yeah, you you can get. You see where I'm at? Yep. Go ahead and move your cursor. Move your token right there. Is that move too far? Nope. That's yeah. right where you need to be. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. With that being said. Um, you're you're at forty five. <laughs> okay. That's it for Bernice. Okay, let's let's see what's going to happen on this one. Um, Bertram. Yes. Twenty five to hit. Yep. Uh, 19 to hit. Okay. No. The same spell cannot be put on the same person like that. The only thing, the only reason why she has Shield of Faith and the other one is because the Guardian itself is literally using its shield to try to block her. 
and then the other one's a spell. That's the reason why I'm allowing that to stack. Okay. But two shields of faith, I will not allow to stack. It's whichever one's better. Uh, okay, so one hit on you. Um, let me get my damage dice. Uh, that is 11 points of damage as you feel from somewhere whoosh, just gut punch you with a slam. Well, it's a slam attack. Um, now, 23 to hit your shield golem. 23 to hit your shield golem. Jeez, well, just let me finish before you start reacting. 23 to hit your shield golem. 23 to hit your shield golem again. Uh, 10 points for the first one. 13 points for the other one. And and yeah, it, so your shield gum does not have any resistance when it comes to attacks or damage, right? So okay, all right. So it took damage, noted the damage, right? Okay, and you just took damage. As well, did you have a reaction or something that you want to use, Bertram? Yeah. I don't know if you, uh, you, Mister, um, you know, yeah, th this, uh, Mister, number one bullshit guy. Okay. All right, Peter, it, it is your turn. It is my turn. It is your turn, sir. Uh, so you moved? Yeah. Is that what I saw? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what what are you doing yeah, you guessing. Guessing. Um, I'm not gonna do anything. mr roboto's up next so you moved and that's that's it, that's it. okay okay mr roboto it's not an action i don't regeneration yeah shield guardian regains 10 hit points at the start of its turn mm -hmm. if it at least has one hit point. right so, so it regained 10 hit points back from uh from the damage it just took but it is its turn, so what's it going to do? It's going to attack him with a dart. Okay. And Swing away with disadvantage. Go right ahead. Hey! 18? That was the lowest roll? Yeah, I got an 11 and a 19. So, 18. Mm -hmm. Roll damage. You, you, it hit. Uh, it's 2d6s. Plus 4. So 10 points of damage. Okay. Wait a second. Mm, okay, no, go, go ahead. Roll, roll to attack. I'm just checking here. I have a 23. For the low? Yeah, I got 16 and an 18. Jeez, yeah, now that hits. Roll roll for damage. Both attacks hit. 11. It was able to hit that time, yeah. Okay. As the shield golem, boom, boom, just seems to hit. Oh, wait, it had minus two damage yes, on both of those so that's my 
minus four total. Um, so hold on. First one was ten, and the other one was eleven. Right. Okay. So. Yep. Okay. I I got it. I got it. I forgot it has minus two for damage yeah, I right now. Okay, right, no, that's fine. All right, that ends your turn. Yes. All right, Mr. Thorn, it's your turn, buddy. All right. As so what, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm uh, Ron, uh, both of your characters are coming up next. So I am going to check what I have in the paintings or have in divine sense. Okay. Action. Detect good and evil until the end of my next turn. Each, until the end of my next turn, you can see anything affected by a hollow spell or no location of any celestial, fiend, un or undead within 60 feet that is not behind total cover. Okay. Move your person and then tell me again what that what yeah, you just did. I'm too far away to see that, so I didn't actually grab it. Uh, I see. I was right here. Oh, shit. No. What the fuck? You can't. I mean, I'm still showing you back here. Or who's that? Who, who's that back there? Oh, oh, okay. I, I need to probably zoom in on this map. I was at the corner. Move me real quick. I'm not technical difficulty. Um, ping where you were. Yeah, it's stretching you. Yeah, he stretched you too. There you go. I don't know how. Uh, where where were you? I was at the corner. Yeah, yeah. Ping it again. Okay, so you were here. Okay, and where are you trying to go? Right, uh, twenty-five feet, closest to here as possible. Okay, so we got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 will get you there. Do I sense anything? Again, read me what it says. All right. Uh-huh. You can detect a good, or a good and evil until uh -huh. the end of your next turn. Since anything affected by a hollow spell or no location of any celestial fiend un or undead within 60 feet that is not behind total cover, you can use this feature four times per rest. Cool. You sense nothing. It is good. good. Yeah. I think it comes back after a short rest. You, you sense nothing. Well, you get to do it four times, so like it matters. <laughs> I mean, how often do you use that? You don't use that very often. No, so. because I used to only have two. Yeah, so well, you got three now. Four. Uh, but yeah, no, three, you, yeah. three now left. Yeah. Uh, but no, you don't sense anything in that nature. <laughs> um, I'm guessing that's going to end your turn because. No, I'm going to use my bonus action. Oh. Cast uh, shield effect on myself. Of course, everybody's shielding up on invisible shit, but that's completely <laughs> fine with me because <laughs> I got advantage and I'm I'm rolling hot tonight. I need to go to the casino right after I get done with this because I'm rolling hot. What time are we finishing? Uh, we're we got about 15, 16 okay. minutes left. <laughs> but I'm hoping I can get everybody through one more round before we stop. Right. Luckily, with this using roll twenty, everything is pretty much saves right there. Uh, does somebody just draw a circle? <laughs> it's drawing circles. Who, who's drawing circles on the map? <laughs> I was trying to do something. Like this. But the process of you trying to get rid of it looks like you added one and then when you <laughs> took one away. Sorry about that. No, that's, that's, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it is your turn, BF. All right, I'm going to move in. Oops, that's still a circle. <coughs> I don't see a circle. <laughs> I, I'll... Uh... I, I want to select. Okay, I'm, 
I'm going to move in next to Lauren here so I can see in this room better. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to cast right up against the back wall. Back here. Okay. Right up against it. I'm going to cast Shatter. And it's a 10 foot radius. So the back wall out is 10 feet. Really casting shatter. I'm really casting shatter. Ten foot radius, you ten said. Foot radius. So that'd yeah. be a twenty foot diameter. Twenty foot diameter. But the wall is going to be the center of it. You would like it to be the center of it, wouldn't you? Radius is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you would like that to be that, wouldn't you? Um, I've got time to draw a circle. No, I yeah. Well, I got the circle right here. I got you. I got your circle right here. Ooh, I should use this one. It's magic. Oh well. Now, reminder, there is an arch right there. Okay. Does it affect magical things? Uh well I'll read. <laughs> this is what it says. I just I, I just want to make sure. It says, sudden loud ringing noise appears painfully intense, erupts from a point of your choice within range. Creature within any creature within a 10 foot radius sphere must make constitution saving throw under damage. A creature made of inorganic materials such as stone, organic, crystal, or metal has disadvantage to save. Doesn't say anything about affecting anything else. No, I'm asking because the, uh, the, the, the arches would be considered magical items. So I'm just trying to make sure if it would be affected. This thing is not acting like it should be. I am trying to grab the circle and it's not grabbing. Because I right about there is about the halfway mark. It should only be two square, ten feet. Right. I, I, I drew it out exactly ten ten feet across is is the thing. It, it, is tw it is 20 feet from that circle to that circle. Yeah. Where I have it. Um, yeah. Okay. You cast Shatter? Yep. Cool. Man, it's just not... Things are just not reacting the way I want it to. Okay. So I'm going to do that. I'll leave it there. Um, unfortunately, you don't really hit anything, but you do make a hole. Find lots of sounds. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Don't know. They're invisible. They could. They could have moved. I mean, yeah. Apparently, they're not right there. <laughs> like I, I have it marked where they're at, and I, I know where they're at. But that's 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 where you wanted your shadow, right? Shatter, right? Right there. Yep. Okay. Now, if you really wanted to, and make sure you hit it, you could engulf, you know, you the oh, golem. I could and, do it. Yeah. 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 You could have done that, and there, therefore, you probably guarantee you're definitely gonna hit something. <laughs> but <clears throat> where that is, where where you cast it, it did not hit. It, it didn't do anything. It, you see some of the ground disappear and some of the wall disappear um from the shatter because i believe it does dis make that shit disappear other than that that's it okay uh bb uh, um... yeah right now you guys are pretty much playing battleship right now that's exactly what i just said yeah. 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 I was thinking more of the hunt for the Red October. <laughs> uh, pretty much about the same thing. Uh, I'll do. I'm gonna do uh, just a random attack, I guess, with my. <coughs> okay. Big uh, gear. All right. At disadvantage. Always forever since you've been 
Ten to hit. Will not hit. All right. Uh, that misses. Do it again. Okay. I see you figured out the disadvantage now. Because okay. he can't see what your score. Another, another ten. Wow. Both swipe and miss. Whatever you're swiping at, it, it did not hit anything. Maybe, maybe not. You're gonna move where? Okay, so. <laughs> it would have maybe possibly had a reaction to attack you. I know. <laughs> but your bullshitness with your fancy footwork allows you to attack and then move without uh, without being provoked opportunities. Whether or not you hit or not, you yeah. swiped, you missed. Whether you knew you were attacking at the right spot or not, you just swipe. I'm moving. Um, so fortunately, <laughs> they don't. They can't attack you, but that's fine. Uh, so you move. That ends your turn. That goes to Mal. So now, Mal, it is your turn. Vlad got out of the way. I was going to cast Fairy Fire. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we did the same thing. Okay. Hopefully we can see it. I'm going to cast Fairy Fire. Basically, let me see. Bernice, you're right after her. It's a, it's a radius. It's cubed. All right, so it's it's a twenty foot cubed. Okay. Okay, I'm going to move the shatter icon. We'll move the shatter icon away. And then we're going to bring in this cube. It, I, I better change this different color. Yeah, what color do you want this? Hey, don't judge. Don't judge. Okay. Is this what you're wanting to do? Move it down. You want it down one? Yes. So right here. Right above the You want it right there? Yes. Okay. Now you have to do. Yep. They have a save, don't they? Dex, they already save and throw. Dexterity saving throw. Mm -hmm. And what are they trying to beat? <laughs> what did I get? Eight on one and 21 for the other. Yeah, one of them fails. One of them fails, one of them saves. Wait, no, I, you know what, I'm going to take one. What is this? Fire. So it will outline the thing if it fails. It's and one, one failed. Succeeded. But here's the thing. Did Mal fail or Mal succeed on hers? Succeeded. Mr. Robot wanted to take the hit. So he failed. And guess what I rolled? I don't know. A five. Of Minus course one. <laughs> so four. Okay. Bernice, so, do you know what you're going to do? Yeah. Okay, cool. Because real quick. Oop. I'm killing it. I'm 
trying to grab this yeah, thing, and I keep it. adjusting you can, the side. You can advantage to it. Here's the thing. What's the thing? A purple aura lights up. It's a uh, medium. So is it Warcraft, Humanite? They're both medium creatures. It's medium. You see, you see starting to light up a purple color, a purplish color of an air, invisible type air looking elemental as it just, you just see this, this purple shimmer just kind of like move around. It almost looks like a purple flame as it's swirling and everything else. Um, you guys can't really feel the, the, the movement of it, but it does end up getting outlined as you do happen to see... What well, almost looks like um like a um uh, a skull looking face for a head is right there as you, okay think of the race from Lord of the Rings but when they're invisible like when he puts the ring on and you see that's kind of what that is but they're invisible but one of them's failed and that's the one you see Bertram as you look back and there's the one that you missed. Bernice, real quick, uh, what do you, what do you want to do? Um, Mal, is that, that's going to end your turn, right? Yeah, because I can't work with someone else. Okay. I'm going to move in behind Thorron. Uh, Thor okay. Thorron. So <laughs> this is you. Right here gets you to 15. Another 20 gets you right there. So right, I think what I say, right here. So that's that's your full movement. Yep. <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna move in another ten feet, so thirty five feet. So you're dashing? Mm hmm Okay. And you dash. That's your action. So what are you doing? You got a bonus action. Luckily I allow you guys to pass through your allies, so that's that's good. Um <coughs> Real quick, I'm gonna copy. Ooh, there. That's not what I wanted to grab. Um, I'm gonna heal Mal. Use uh, healing word to heal Mal's um, first level. Okay, sorry, I moved this off, and I didn't mean to move this off. But for some reason, I keep sh I keep altering it. You know what? I didn't have to put that icon on there. Let me move that out of the way. Delete. That there. And then I can actually. Uh... There it is. Um, let's see here. I'll just put that on there. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else you're doing? Um, let's see. I use my action. I'm going to dash. Bonus action. Okay. All right. So, real quick, because I, I, I hate to leave this as it is with the, with the fighting and initiative. But luckily, we can save it here in roll 20. So, you guys, upon taking a day off and doing a, doing a day of rest, decided to come back down. Stopping at the first floor to grab a stone or a shield golem, which right now seems to be kind of helpful. As you made your way back to the sixth floor, coming across two stone arches, Mal began to be assaulted by two invisible forces. The... After casting the uh, fairy fire, 
to light it up, one invisible stalker is lit up. While the other one is still unknown. Yes, there are multiple because they were hidden from two different directions. And that's impossible for one creature to do unless they're stretch or strong or something. Uh, but one is revealed of where it's at. Mal is hurt and is bleeding out. We are going to be starting on the top around next time. Um, but this is where we're going to end. I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera back on. Hey, hi. Um, so that's where we're going to end for today. We will pick up. Uh, are we good for next week? Yeah. Okay. So next week we'll be back uh, again, 2 p.m. Uh, Central time. And we'll be playing it about, about around 7 o'clock or so is where we're going to end since we're going to take a break in between. Hopefully I can get some videos or something uh, worked up or some slideshows maybe worked up of your guys' uh, character sheets to where when we take a break, I can just throw that up there and it's interactive. Now, I know it's a little boring because right now we're just we're using uh, Roll20. Uh, we, don't, we don't really have like 3D maps or anything like that. We don't have uh, really a camera-based setup to be able to do where everybody has cameras on them and stuff. And we're not playing... Um, over Skype or over Zoom. I don't even know if Skype is even used anymore now. No, they've gotten rid of it. It's yeah. Now, uh, so Zoom is the main. Yeah, Zoom or uh, Teams. Teams, okay. So we're not we're not really like at our homes doing this. We're actually at the tables, live at the tables, sitting here role playing. Uh, and we, we like to use our minifigures. Right now I didn't set it up for the minifigures just because they were invisible. So I figured it was just best to leave it as it is. Now I may throw down the icon, but if the visibility goes gets dropped, like you lose concentration on this, gets dropped, they're gone again. Um, but I hope you guys had a good time. I hope everybody that's watching had a good time. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you're not already a follower, please hit that follow button. Um, it helps grow our channel. We are trying to get to the affiliate level. Um, you can also catch this on YouTube. Uh, I will try to post this maybe tomorrow or something on YouTube, uh, which I do have a link in the bio uh, here on my channel. Just click it. It'll take you right over to YouTube. It's called The Gaming Monkeys is where I'm going to post it. Now, if we continue to do this, I may make a new channel called The Door Smashers um, to where we can have maybe our own channel of D&D. But for right now, I'll just put it on my channel uh, for now until we progress further or, or whatever. If we get more viewers, then I can probably just make another channel and... And, and, and everything like that but for right now this is what we're going to do and again we are running the module of the mad mage it's a dungeon crawl yeah it takes a little bit we're just trying to get in the role of things because this is our first time going live um but we try to have fun i mean we, we try to do stuff and have fun with with it um i got one guy that i call my number one bullshit guy so if you do hear that that's that's who i'm talking about um <laughs> but but i enjoy it he comes up with some funny funny bullshit to to throw at me um other than that uh yeah so just keep a lookout uh i think my next live stream that i'm probably going to do is going to be monday which is going to be borderlands 3 um and then throughout the week uh rest of the week will be again it'll be borderlands 3 some apex borderlands 3 the surge borderlands 3 you see a trend going with borderlands 3 i'm almost we're, we're almost done with the dlc on the first uh second dlc uh guns loves and tentacles yeah but this is our D D group um as you can see, we, we kind of were, we're still working out some stuff. We're going to try to tweak it here and there uh, and see if we can make it, improve it, and make it better for y'all uh, that are watching. Uh, otherwise, hey, thank you for watching. If you're a D&D fan, this is uh, hopefully some interaction or something good. Uh, maybe down the road we'll do cameras or other mic, more mics or something. I don't know. I mean, we just got to see how things go. Until next time, y'all. Um, until next time, keep it real, keep it fun, keep it peace. Um, watch on YouTube. Right over here is probably going to be a couple of videos maybe or a suggested video. There's also a link uh, probably like right here uh, that you can click on to subscribe for a YouTube channel. And, uh, yeah, until next time, peace, guys. Peace.